What's happening, lids? We're here to tell you about our Patreon membership that starts from just three quid a month. It is the biggest Patreon in the UK and the fastest growing Patreon on planet Earth, kids. Dan, why is that? You get early access to the public episode. Pubes get it on Monday. You can get it up to 48 hours early. Um, and on top of that, let me just interrupt you there and say you don't get any adverts on the early access. The YouTube adverts that sort of interrupt the show for the public people. If you watch it via the Patreon app, the adverts aren't there. You get an advert-free early access on top of your bonus episode every single week and all of the specials that we drop one of every single month. Dan, list them. The Ghost Hunt. The Ghost Hunt 2. We've done so many lock-ins and they've got more drunk and more ridiculous and we've got more planned. The we've... roast of Adam and Dan, oh. blind date. This is all part of the Patreon membership. Everyone from three quid to five to ten, even if you sign up for the lowest tier, you get all the bonus content. People get early access to tickets as well. It's the only do... way It's the only way to see us live, basically. Yeah. If you're not a patron, you're not going to get to buy tickets to see us live. Apart from the arena show, which is on sale right now. It's on sale publicly. You can get tickets to gigs and tours. Dot com Friday the 9th of December, we change the UK and worldwide podcast game by throwing the biggest ever podcast party at the Echo Arena. It's not the Echo Arena anymore, it's the MS Bank Arena, but I don't care. I'm old school. Uh, you can get them right now. Tickets are still on sale. Come and join us for the biggest night of this podcast and all of our lives. Do you know who got the best tickets for that? Patreons, because it was on there first. Patreon.com slash have a word pod. Enjoyed the episode, you filthy animals. Go ahead. Wag Wag Leads, you're listening to the funniest podcast in the game with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal and Finn. This is the one and only Have A Word. Brought to you by Manscaped.com, the very best in below the belt men's grooming. Go Ed, get on me. Man. Oh, lad. Yes. <laughs> I just want to say with every fibre of my being... You like yeah. it? Oh, yeah. For the audio listener, just imagine <laughs> you're just seeing the Amazon rainforest. And if you keep going down the Amazon, get us some fucking row with it. Yeah. That looks Turkish. <laughs> Med. I feel like a sex god. Do you? <laughs> Do you? Do they wear North Face? You look like a car washer. <laughs> 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 you look like. Seven inside, outside. You Sorry, want 20 mate. pounds, inside. super valet? keys with me, mate. Get my friend Mahmoud to do the boot. Oh, <laughs> that awkward moment when they open the door like, hello, mate, how's your life better than mine? Oh, fuck me. What was that line in Family Guy? Oh, I used to be a cardiologist. <laughs> Just awful. And then they give you an air freshener that costs less than one penny. Yep. And makes it the car smell worse than it did before. It no. keeps. Yeah, it, I love my little air freshener. No, mate, they, they keep their scent for about twenty five. Jelly minutes. bellies are the best. Jelly bellies. Oh, are the best. someone's doing all right with that fucking Patreon money. Are they expensive. <laughs> fucking jelly belly air freshener. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> fucking made of pure rubber lake. Guys <laughs> in a PVC. The car park next to my building has a, a valet service. Oh, what don't you have in this fucking building? It's good, isn't it? Fucking, fucking a masseuse on level five, a cleaner on level two, a fucking. The cleaner's gym. just moved out, actually, the fucking rat. I've got to find a new one. Oh, there they? Yeah. Did you use it once? Yeah. I will not use a cleaner that resides somewhere else. No, it, they don't do town. Cleaners do suburbs, they don't do city centres. Where's she moved? What? Where's Cardiff. She? She's moving. She's... How fucking messy was your place? <laughs> no, lad. I'm leaving the country. I love Britain, but I'm leaving England. Um, Get me out. <laughs> um, I wanted to put a long sleeve on today. I don't know why, but I I didn't want. I'd normally have a t-shirt on. The... <laughs> did we all just have a collective stroke? <laughs> One of the lights is gone. What, Damn. what did just happen? Someone, oh. what? Are you too sexy for the lighting, ah, Adam? Too, too sexy, sexy for, for the, the lights. lights. Too sexy too for, for the lights. lights. So Light. sexy, the light. You, yeah, phenomenal. Really like it. Why long sleeve? What happened there? I just, I I, I, I did a wash the other day and uh, this was still hanging up. So I was like, oh, I'll put that on. But then nice. it was too, I was like, I can't have a t-shirt on that. Then I'll be too hot because it's, you know, it's not quite as hot as it was yesterday and the day before, but it's still warm. It's come right down. It's come right down to normal British summer heat now, hasn't it? 20 degrees. Ye yesterday, and I mean, it was a two day heat wave. Yeah. And I was done. I was, if someone had gone like, cool, it's winter now, I'd be like, wicked, let's I do went, it. I went street drinking. 
with 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 friends, not with people who live on the streets. Tell me about um, it. Can just tell me about it. Um, I met uh, Alfie Brown. No, oh. and his lovely partner Jesse. Jesse and their um, the several month old baby. You went, for, you went, but you can't give booze to baby. Um, <laughs> uh, I I didn't know because Jessie's breastfeeding and she she was breastfeeding the baby while we were on Castle Street, but she was also having an Aperol spritz. And I didn't know when you were feeding babies your tits that you could booze. I thought that might end up you know getting the baby uh, pissed. If you, it prob- if you get on Mum's Net, I yeah. reckon. What the fuck, uh, Mum's Net? Mum's Net. It's Facebook for you know. Mums, so Mums. Facebook then. It's just a lot of fucking, this has happened to my baby. And then you get every possible, like, there's a rash on the back of his leg. What is it? And someone's like, it's probably just dermatology, like to contact dermatitis or, or change what you And then other ones are like, it could be baby AIDS. Like it's <laughs> it, within three comments, someone's like, it's probably Al Qaeda. Like it's that ridiculous. Three normal comments about allergies or what you're washing your clothes with. And then someone going, is it meningitis that he's got through his balls? It's that ridiculous. <laughs> I fucking hate mums there. Better for everyone to be off it. And I'm sure best- if you went on there, they'd be like, the alcohol and breastfeeding. But, uh, you know, maybe, you it's like, ma- maybe it's like your Guinness. Yeah, it's good you for know, your Aperol splits. No, but like, yeah. maybe there's a, there's like, a, you know, you're like 28 Guinness is good for me. Yeah. Maybe if you breastfeed and it's like five Aperol splits after that, just one Sambuca. She wouldn't have a second one. She only had one. Me and I've had a couple of pints. Uh, just a loosener for the baby. Like, yeah. oh, this milk's so good. But Castle Street in Liverpool in the sun is oh, just. I love Castle the Street. Architecture. I love that castle. On top of. Like it's such a sun trap. It's good, good bars, good vibes. Where is it? Where is it? I'll know it. You Probably just went with where Molly you bailed before after you Molly. got off. You no, where you down. left from? Duke Street, then Castle Street. Dale Street, Dale then Castle Street. Street. Yeah, right, cool. Yeah, so good. It's very, you love very it good. There. I know. So, I love drinking in Liverpool. Now. Had a little booze great. there. Um, Alfie and Jesse went home for some pizza. My friend met me. We went for uh, some steak at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. Not great. No, no. The one just ne- near Liverpool, one that faces yeah, yeah. the Bread Street one. I, I wanted to try it for a while. Went for a steak. No, nah, it was fine. Um, okay, and then went back to Castle Street for more booze, oh. and then went to Pogues. Of course, I was in bed by midnight. Everybody knows your name. I was in bed by midnight though. I had a really, really good and sensible night. Did you do a run yesterday? What? Did no. you do? Oh, you're back. Back to square one. No, no, no personal no, training no, no, session no, no. at seven thirty tomorrow morning before he, I go to London. He's bulking. <laughs> he's bulking. That yeah. was a bulking day, I wasn't it? I had to get me Guinness in. Yeah, yeah, you're bulking. Do you know what I had with me steak? As me sides, I had Guinness. honey roasted carrots and cabbage. No chips. So suck a fart out of my cunt. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you healthy man. Oh. You had a steak followed by a Pogues. Sorry, fucking Joe Wicks. I had like four beers in oh, a Guinness. Oh, let him live, I'm Carl. Joking. Let him I had like live. four beers in a Guinness. <laughs> Look at him. He's happy. He's bulking. He's bulking with mojito. And they say that. And Weightlifters, you, know you talk to them. They're like, mojito, mojito, mojito. I woke up today hot Shred. and a bit hungover. And I was like, oh, today's going to be grim. But I got a shower, went for a walk, got a coffee. And I genuinely think I might be in the best mood I've ever been in. I feel good. <laughs> I love it when he's flying. <laughs> it feels so, good. The ro- the rowy coaster. We're all on the <laughs> rowy coaster, mate. Wow, I'm having a fucking anxiety attack. This is a hard time. <laughs> Down we go. Up we go. I'm fucking amazing. I feel handsome. I love it. So excited. <laughs> I just had a really nice fucking night. Fucking brilliant. Do you know what I mean? I had a really good night. I don't give a shit. If you come here, fucking chest air out in this mood, we Woo! are flying. Now, uh, I've got one for the... You all right, Carl? Bored of us yet? No, let are you me, getting your chest fl- me, chest flange off? Of course, I hear these chest flange. Can right you here. see the grey? First Sexy enough, though, isn't it? First grey hairs are coming through on the tits. Ooh. Don't know how I feel that. about that. I've got, a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of salt and pepper going on in the beard. I'm fine with that. Not wrong it's not it. salt and pepper, is it? It's more like cumin and salt. <laughs> it's cumin and <laughs> There's salt. There's no pepper. It's very, very salt and pepper. The smoked paprika and... Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> salt. <That's lovely. laughs> For some reason, I'm not asked about that. Don't mind a little bit of that. But I hear it doesn't bother me at all. On a man, it looks, uh, you can look like George On a Lamb. woman. Laura- disgusting! <laughs> Laura- Laura's disgusting! <laughs> no, Old but- bitch, dye your hair! No, but they can dye their hair a lot more. Yeah, like- just saying, the beard, I'm not talking about on a woman. Uh, Laura <laughs> shaves. Manscaped.com. Uh, if you've got a hairy hair or wife. I don't mind it in the beard. I've got a few in the chest. Why is that bothering you? I don't, I feel like my first grey pube is coming. Yeah. And I don't oh. know how well, I this feel is about pubes, this. Isn't it? Right. Cock pubes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I don't ever think I'm a beard and cock pubes. That was the, 
Do you know what? You did it on purpose, and I don't mind an accidental touch. <laughs> but considering how close we've become and how successful this pod is, do not enjoy physical contact with Rowie bags. <laughs> That's my Rowie coaster when I'm like, eh. Yeah. But I, ha, grey pubes. So you're fine with grey hair? You're fine with it happening? Yeah, oh, grey hair, grey beard. Let's say you can. A man can work it. George Lamb, sexy boy. You can work it. I hey, would. George uh, Lamb went grey early, mid twenties. Yeah, yeah. My mate Felix, who I did uh, show me the sample with, he went grey fucking <coughs> really early. Early 20s, and he'd gone silver fox. If you told me right now, if a genie came down and was like, what's happening, right? Got some news for you. Scout genie. <laughs> Lad, rub on that. It's not me dick. <laughs> if he came down and I was like, look, I can tell the future. Got some news for you. I can show you my lamp. Go on. <laughs> Get on me, Don't lamp, you dare lamp. close your eyes. Stop me, lad. If he went, you'll go, you can either sort of take your chances with your hair for the rest of your life, or right now, I'll guarantee you, within six months, you'll be fully grey, but you'll never go bald. I would sign up for that immediately. Oh, I would sign it with immediately. my cock. I'd, I'm quite happy to sit here with a proper Philip Schofield going on. Yeah. And just have... Little Wayne Lineker. Yeah. Wow. Even though he's a fucking paedophile. <laughs> <laughs> let me just... Let me just... <laughs> I sort of forgot who I was talking to. For let me just there. VAR what happened there. If a genie came down and was like, Adam, lad, you can go silver fox like a fucking weird Iranian Father Christmas right now. Or you could go bald. I'd say, fuck you, genie. I will never go bald. Not like a weird, shiny, balded headed pedo. That'd be the worst thing I can imagine. I'd shoot myself and all my loved ones. I'd shoot your loved ones just to end the misery of being fucking bald. What do you think, Dan? Are you bald, Dan? Show the world. You can't listen, drink that either. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> you suit it. If I go bald, listen. I'm going to look like someone's took all the accessories off a of Mr. Potato Head. Listen, homeboy. <laughs> when, it to, when it comes to... <laughs> <laughs> My one good eye. <laughs> when it comes to the old bald, right, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it... I went bald... When I was still relatively fuckable, I was thin. My skin, no, nah, give me a breath. The, no. I, we were going out. I were, as soon as I saw it, clipped it, gone, shaved head. There was people. I clipped my head when it was the same era as Beckham when he had a shaved head. It wasn't unheard of of people with hair to shave the head. I just dealt with it. I think if you go further down that line. And you start getting into your 30s and things, you know, get a few fucking grey hairs here and there and you're starting to feel a bit, like, older. To then lose your hair, I think, weirdly, it's worse. Yeah. I think you'd think it was the other way around. Look like, God, if you lose your hair early. But I don't know. I just... It happened so early, dealt with it. Never, ever tried to be like, what? If going to fucking Turkey and getting plugs or whatever. I would literally go to... The second I've yeah. seen any sign of hair loss, I would be in Turkey. I think that, you know... I think there has to be a decent level of hair loss. You can't, like, oh, my God, I don't like me hair. Because he'd be like, no. I think they'll do whatever well, Adam, I, I think whatever you're... I, I think you're genuinely all right. Yeah. You've, there's, a, there's a thickness to it yeah. that Tick. I don't think is going. Have you got ginger pubes? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, No, no they're like sort of mousy blonde. Because I wasn't ginger. My beard's just a bit red. My granddad, old Len, Leonard Sharples, uh, oh, he... What a name? Yeah, Len, Len, he's literally my body type, my, my hair and my facial hair. I've seen pictures of him when he was a bit younger... And he had a gingery sort of, his facial hair grew a bit gingery and, his, um, and he was bald. But apparently that's where a lot of your genes for it come. It come from your mum's dad. Your dad. dad, yeah. So my, my granddad Vinny, my mum's dad, had jet black hair until he was like 70. And he didn't die. No. Right. Weirdly, I think, I think my pubes strong. are jet black. Isn't that mad? So am I. Yeah, but you've got black hair. Oh. I've got quite light brown hair, really. Like, my pubes are jet black. My cock looks like an elephant with a Chinese haircut. My mum's dad had an afro. What? What? My mum's dad had an afro. Afro hair. Your mum's dad had an afro. Not often I do that for you, Carl. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's actually <laughs> bullshit as well. It is a bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> What, um, it went grey though. I'm, I say I'm, I'm not dread and gone grey at all. I think men can work it, and women can die very easily. Hey. They're here. <laughs>
Yeah, they're weak. You have to be careful with them. <laughs> Come here, Strangle love. them. You're stronger. <laughs> um, uh, right, okay. I, you, think you, I think you'll suit it. If it happens, I think you'll suit it. Long hey, may listen, this, whatever long you may fucking want to suit, you'll suit. You mm. wear anything with a bit of confidence. Well, you Rob Mulholland it. didn't wear a hat on uh, yeah, no. Dead Men Talking uh, last week. And I, you just do that thing of like, oh, lad. Like, it's just weird. The visual is weird. I've not worn a hat. I think for two of the maybe 100 and... F- well, if you could include Patreon. So there's one when Ishan was in, when I think you had COVID. First Ishan. I forgot my yeah, hat. The first and I Ishan, didn't wear you didn't it. have a hat on. And someone messaged me and went, <laughs> someone tweeted, I fucking hate bald Dan. And I went, so do I. He was like, mate, massive respect. I love you. It's just really hard to look at you without a hat. <laughs> Massive respect. It's so mean. Massive respect, but you're hard to look at without a hat on. But I think because I've gone so far down the line when we're in here wearing a hat, and and I wear the the, the pork pie on stage. But in normal life, I don't wear a hat normal all the time life. at home. Yeah, non-performing. You I don't t- sleep in your pork pie. Funny <laughs> 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 if you did. Like your brother, you've got a very definite look. Even at bedtime. You have though. You could do an outline of your face without your features. No, it's you. So on, um, no, it's you. what? Oh no, it's me. Um, I did the Shrewsbury Gala on Sunday, and there was a projector that was putting the logo onto the back of the screen, and I, like an idiot, I was like, oh, I'll just have a little wander around the back. <laughs> just wandered in front of it, and the most definite, like. <laughs> silhouette of me was projected massive <laughs> someone got a picture of it so i uh, it was while uh, steve royal was on so i went back on i was like did you see me walking from the projector they were like yes <laughs> so i was like cool well i'll wait till at some point in the show i'll i'll decide who i know well enough to fuck up their set by walking out and then flo and joan were on and they had a technical issue and i was like oh yes it's my chance they were like flapping because the keyboard wouldn't play so i, I went just had a little wonder. It's fucking great getting laughs when you're not on stage. And then I did a little fucking like finger puppet fight. Quality fun. Um, yeah, very definite silhouette. I think you look great, Grey Man. I think it look good. And you know, maybe next episode you'll come in. Those jet black pubes will be out for a change. It is interesting stuff. How often do you change, uh, shave your pubes? Change me pubes. Change. How often do I change them? The Mr. Potato Head pube <laughs> edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be so grim. <laughs> um, you know, I shave me pubes sort of when I notice it's getting out of hand. Yes, yeah, I, I, I shave me pubes when I look down there and be like, I wouldn't want to suck but that. But that happens overnight, doesn't it? Yeah, when you there's know? endangered species of birds that are like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus whenever, I, whenever I go for a piss in the morning and a pigeon flies out <laughs> my pants, I'm like, do you know what? That's out time of for a while. Time a for a while. fucking cockatoo in me pubs. Yeah, um, I, I, tr- this is weird. I trim my pubes when... Like, as part of a going out. You know when you're like, right, going out. And it's absolutely yeah, from when I, I was that, single. I'd, I'd be doing that three times a week, wouldn't I? You'd have no Yeah, pubes. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if Laura ever caught me, like, you know, clearly getting ready for a night out and trimming my pubes, she'd be like, what are you doing that for? There's no, there's, it's no correlation to my life now. But that was part of the, back in the day, you were like, I was going single. I pubes a before trip. a date. Oh, you fucking romantic bastard. You know what I mean? Because, like, just, you just never know how a date's going to go. Sometimes it goes that way, and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be surprising the girl. With, I don't, yeah. With, with, you ever wash your cock in a pub sink? Yeah. Oh, Have yeah, you? I've washed my dick, yeah. What if you got caught doing that? <laughs> By you, eh? I, I have... No, that's the man, oh, the no. landlord. No, <laughs> not in a pub. It? Not in a pub. I have definitely washed my penis in a bathroom. At, like, you know, when that's you've gone back. yeah. <laughs> Me too. This morning, in fact, <laughs> it's good that you why. don't do it in the kitchen. I, just, in I, a house can't, party I can't remember, something. like a house party. No, I think going back to theirs, I've washed my penis, thinking I might get noshed off here. <laughs> I don't know how salty it is. That's weird though, because I wash a lot. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm like a two showers yeah, a day. You want to be extra, extra sure it's clean. Yeah, oh, yeah, but I'm not. I don't know why. No, but no I have definitely. Dirty, but you get sweaty in my head. Yeah, it's clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's cake's dead. <clears throat> Rest anyway, in peace. Um, can I ask you a question, Dan? <laughs> oh, it's your special. It's your available album. on tour. Can you show me Adam's cake? Five pounds, he's I'm definitely saying. dead now. He's been alive for 18 months. Oh, no. oh, he's all right. Oh. <laughs> How is that oh, possible? <laughs> these are made. 
<laughs> These are made of cake, and the only thing that's going is the fucking hands. Where's your hands gone? They're like, f- they're like they got stuck in a house fire. Like, I tried to save the baby. But... When you walk out and someone says something, what? <clears throat> How are they still going? It's insanity. Don't put it. Oh my God, these seems. They're not coming yeah. to the new studio, these, are they? No, because no, we, we've got actual plastic. I've got on. a pube related question. Um, Dan, <laughs> what is. <laughs> What is your when you when you do shave it? Yeah, right. It's, this is gonna you're gonna think this is wild, right? Oh. What is your sort? What does it look like when you finished? Great. I'm so glad. This is how in tune we are. I was waiting for a lull, and I was gonna ask you this same question. I can tell. I can tell you mine. I get my manscape.com, and I know it's you think it's bullshit. I get the lawnmower 4.0 that it's they actually sent us. Fucking very good. It's excellent yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I go. From one leg to the uh, over the top, I create a line under my belly, yeah, over my dick. So yeah. there's not like just in, like endless pubs going on. That's yeah. I clip that, but then I wet shape <laughs> down each inner thigh. I I just do a few little wet shaves. I've got hairy thighs, me. I've got hairy thighs. So here's the thing, right? No. Oh no! Look at my hair, my thighs. You absolute seal. The animal, not the singer. I the clue. Um, <laughs> I'm never gonna survive. Unless so what I do is <laughs> fucking Bunsen burn. I manscape the me inner thighs, the 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 afro, you know, the above your cock bit. Mons pubis. Mm. This bit. The triangle. The, the thatch. There. I, I manscape there, me inner thighs, me Do you leave some you leave some tuft in? Wait. So I manscape. Sorry, I was rushing the me, pubes. Me afro, me inner thighs, uh, and all over, essentially, right? Including the gooch. And then... Whoa. You manscape the gooch. And then I get a wet shave, and I go from, essentially, from arsehole to cock. So from me arsehole to me cock, I'm as bald as the day I was born. And then from literally the, like... So, like, my cock starts here. The mons so pubis. The mons pubis, I leave that manscaped. Right. So I essentially just I, have... I, did, I, li- I, I didn't literally enjoy just the journey, have, but I know... What, yeah. Do you know, like, Carl from The Simpsons? I have... His face is my cock and his head is above it. <laughs> yeah, great, yeah. <laughs> wow. I get it. I get it. Right, okay, yeah. I, I, know, I know what you mean. Basically, I want to show any prospective lady that I have the ability... You have a... <laughs> No, that's Neil Carl's Warner. just reaction Why to is my... Neil Warner <laughs> That's just Carl's reaction to my... He wet shaved his gooch. That, you must have an itchy gooch for a couple of days. No, it's fine. I think I've just desensitised to it. Wow. If a girl's going to lick your gooch, you don't want it to have hair oh, on it. Oh, maybe that's where I'm going wrong. Maybe I need to shave my gooch. And girls, like, don't like, Laura. girls don't like gooch pubes in the mouth. <laughs> Come, Fact. Come all of them. Oh, absolutely. Gooch pubes? They don't want it. Oh, no one likes a hairy gooch. No. Literally no one. I basically, I want to show... A fluffy perineum? I want to show that I've got the ability to grow pubes, but then show I've got the decorum to take them all away to make their time down there better. And that's the best of both worlds. So I, I essentially have a hat on me cock. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing more than a millimetre, two millimetres. You're like a number two for the Mons Pubis. Everything no, else... No, I don't even Turkish put a on it. I literally just go... Yeah, same. Oh, there's now. There's now down there. Oh, no, I have oh a, you're I, summer ready, you guys. I have a, I, I have a number one, like it's. I have a naught. I don't, I don't put right. the, the guard on it at all. No, no, no. I mean, I gave myself a number one. I'm not, I, I'm, I've got the. Talk uh, me through the balls. What are you doing with the balls? Wet shave. Yeah, people think that's. You wet rid- shave your bollocks. Oh, I wet shave my bollocks. But what you'd have to do, you have to have a Gillette Mac Three. You have not- to have a Gillette Mac Three, but you have to like pull your yeah, no, scrotum skin so that it's taut. Why do? Why? <laughs> that high. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to make sure there isn't a breeze in case you, you get fucking... as taut as possible because then it won't cut then it won't yeah. cut he puts it over his shoulder yeah. <laughs> never <laughs> lads never shave your balls on the beach because you'll end up fucking surfing <laughs> I reckon fucking parasailing I reckon I can Adam's parasailing yeah. nah, just I've never ball. wet shaved below the belt never not once you need to wet shave your balls why I just it's, do it with the manscape it does the same well, it, it, no it, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't it, it feels like you're going to be nicking central it's very hard to nick your balls on a wet shave no, <laughs> you don't nick it with the manscape you know 4.0 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. alright we're not <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. what are you laughing at 
Steve doesn't agree with us. <laughs> what do you do, Steve? So we can't hear Steve on the mic, so it's pointless. Steve, I'll return. We'll, 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 we'll get to see. Right, okay. Why are we losing every sponsor on the podcast? Why? Because Manscaped, Manscaped is oh, yeah. fucking quality. You need to get rid of that can after Shut this. Up, <laughs> Sneak's amazing. I just fancied one and something else. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak's amazing, but other products aren't available. Pour off. Get off. Put it in a glass then. I'm not putting it in my cum guzzling whore mug. Oh, well. <laughs> Think said Think at work. Said at work. <laughs> Carl, uh, we what, need what to do start. Do? Right, we need to start writing down the things said at work. Yeah, what's my manscape? Pro- I, I want to know what your cock looks like. Um, so I wait. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no hairs on the shaft, unlike you. Yeah, I'm neither have I because I take them off. But I've got a hairless shaft. I go above. <laughs> well, I've got I've got the um, the control to give myself a number one without the thing. Do you know what I mean? Right. I do my beard, my own beard as well. I've got practice, and then I do like the the enemy thighs a little bit, but I've got quite hairy thighs still. Uh, and then I trim the gooch, so it's shorter. It's not you trim it, get some scissors out. No, I use the manscaped again. Run through your fingers. That, don't that say off. scissors. Steve's like, don't say scissors. <laughs> We're not sponsored by scissors. <laughs> Have a word party it's brought to you today by scissors. <laughs> Good for cutting things <laughs> and safer than a knife. I use scissors to cut pizza. Very, very useful when people... It's uh, not the maddest thing, Gabby, when you see her. When you see her. Yeah. It Thin. makes you sound special needs, but I, I have seen it. Finn, I wanna I wanna know what your Turkish bellend looks like. White fro. It's not that different to a regular bellend. Um but <laughs> got the massive dig, mate. Uh Hello mate, look at my Turkish cock, mate. Look what I have done for you, mate. The bull just bodrum. I have shaved a, a moon and a star. You can get that done in Turkish region. barbers though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Manscape like, <clears throat> they'll manscape you. Yeah. Um get the name of the president. Shave the shaft. Oh uh, the one. <laughs> Well, shaved the shaft. Uh, I'm with you on the. Wait, who was it that shaved their gooch? Me. It, yeah, I'm with you on that one. And then I will also trim the inner thigh, oh, and then go. keep it neat. But I don't have a manscaped. I've not. I've not got one. I'll Get have off to the order mic, one. Finn. Get off the mic. And what code would you use? Uh, word twenty. Thank you for free shipping. Free shipping and twenty percent off. I think. Yeah, nice one. And Finn. some. That's how you do other it. Other things with it. Jesus Christ! If I have to drink out of a cum guzzling whore mug, you this can section do isn't sponsored by Manscaped, <laughs> by the way. It might seem like it is so much, <laughs> but it's not. What do you like on the, a lady? Because like you're a heteronormative young man. It, totally bald. I like corn roads. Corn roads. <laughs> Oh, we're going so, to Jamaica. No, like like plaited pubes are nice on a girl. They look good and it keeps them out the way. On a white girl? Yeah. Oh, you can't culture appropriate with your fanny. Why? No, you can't. Because you, you're not going to get called out for it, are you? What about Unless you get them out in public. What about ringlets? What? What would you think about ringlets? I don't know what ringlets are. You do? Just curls. Yeah, but the... Specific to a, ter- sure. a certain. Let's not do that. I believe in a woman's okay. free. I know what you're trying to do. It's just not, it's not I believe in a woman's freedom to choose. She can have whatever she likes down there. The what you like? Corn rope, corn rope yobs. Corn rope yobs. Um, Come on, bro. It, what if I could choose? Yeah. Have they got beads on them? What? Have they got beads on There's them? Yeah. Oh, it'd be like one of them curtains you had for your nana had for flies. <laughs> Come through. How are we, love? God, I'm sick of these flies. Put the kettle on. <laughs> Fucking Ooh, Desmond. John. There's a pussy there. <laughs> Um, um, what you, what would you choose though if you could? Um, if I could choose, I think like to be totally honest, with you, yeah, uh, you just want it bald, don't you? Just want it shaved to fuck. I don't like hairs in my mouth. Shaved to what? I don't like hairs in my mouth. Exactly. It's that's it. I know girls don't either. Yeah. That's why we do. I think it's coming back though, isn't it? A little bit. There's more. Uh, there's more. Yeah, because the feminists are winning. It doesn't seem like porn stars are affected by feminist thinking at the moment. But they've I'm got seeing, hairy pussies, I'm hairy seeing... armpits, and opinions. Porn stars. Adam Rose new stuff flying. I love it. Um, but porn stars have got more more pubs these days. Not all of them. Some of them. That's is a it? specialist subject, isn't it? That's like a special. That's a. It's a search. No, I don't think it is. Lana Rhodes has got some pubs on her, and she's the biggest porn star at the moment. I think. She thought she'd stop being a porn star. Now she's like a podcaster. Oh really? Yeah. Because yeah. they all get abused, don't Not they? Quite the back catalogue, isn't she? An asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you're quite the ass. <laughs> you think that was a euphemism? The fucking back catalogue on that. Yeah, you know you're good at something if you're retiring at 24. No, but have you heard like your Mia Khalifa? Everyone heard her talking about the 
the uh, industry and how horrible it is. She's talked a lot of bollocks though, hasn't she? I'm not trying to underestimate if she's talked about abuse, that's fine. But I remember her going, I've retired, all I did was 12 scenes. You're like, well, I've seen 38 of them. <laughs> <laughs> so unless you had two different camera angles on the same thing, come on, Mia, I get it. She, I, I'm not, like, it's a fuck course. People are so anti-porn. Like, there's porn protesters, I get it. It, it Like, there must be some level of abuse and there's, there's young girls having t the advantage taken of them. But at the same time, there's a lot of porn stars getting fucking paid as well. Like, Lana well, I, Rose. I, I wouldn't say there was a lot getting paid, really. Yeah. I wouldn't right. say that at all. No, I, I, I think it's a very, very, very minute who are making any decent money off it. All right, so it's a bit like football. It's, all, it's, it's, like, a, it's a bit like football. Yeah. The Premier League and is quite small, nothing. and then there's a lot of Sunday that's League. Yeah, the Plymouth fans. Argyle porn stars are getting fucked <laughs> over me. Yeah. Mate, I like the Sunday Leaguers who just get in there, you know. £10 a week. £10 a week. Subs. And it's rough. <laughs> you could come away with That's OnlyFans, isn't it? You could come away with a broken <laughs> leg. Well, that's why OnlyFans is becoming a thing, because they're like, well, we're not fucking getting it. They're getting real money on OnlyFans, if you're good at it. Yeah. But porn stars, like 99% of them are getting fuck all. Yeah, Catch Me Outside lady is earned... Uh, the girl that from, yeah. What was she on, Doctor Phil? Doctor Phil, yeah. Catch me outside. How about that? Is she making She's dollar, made yeah? fifty million. Fifty million. She's made, b -b 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 bank. It's mad because she's not attractive, but you're just interested. She's kind of. She's got a good body. She's she's got that scally thing going on. Yeah, Pov. <laughs> yeah, Pov. Yeah, she's just a bit weird, isn't she? And she does the individual messages thing, like the kid from uh, In Between Us. You know, he he made three hundred grand from going. Oh, well, happy birthday! You can. Yeah. yeah. How many fucking times do you have to do that? Well, a lot of celebrities do it. Like I've, I keep turning them down. Cameo and Memo have, have contacted me so many times. Oh, they love it. And I keep having to go. I don't want to do it. Like I don't want to have the obligation. Sometimes, like one of our fans messages us and like, can you do a happy birthday message? And sometimes I'm like, yeah, absolutely, and I'll do it. And we do them in here sometimes. And sometimes and I just forget. Don't, if we don't, the there's a lot coming through. My DMs have a lot of like, it's my so and so's. Like, can we have a shout out on the pod? You're like, oh, mate, come on, guys. There's 180,000 people Do you know what I find watching quite and weird listening to when someone gets in touch and asks for one for themselves. That happens quite a lot to me. Like, someone. I've got anyone who cares. I, Do you I, care, I get, Adam? I get someone going, oh, my boyfriend's a big fan of the podcast, or my girlfriend's a big fan of the podcast. Um, could I have a little video message because it'll be a surprise? I, get, I can sort of get that. Like, I wouldn't, like, particularly want that from someone I'm into. Like, their work. No, but you would want from Luke Combs. No, I wouldn't. Like, but if you really? get me one. It, I mean, because it's it's not real, is it? You've paid him to do it or, like, asked... He doesn't give a shit. The same way I don't give a shit. Yeah. You're, just, you're just being nice. If for you the sake pitch of being nice. it right... It's better than a birthday card. Because we mentioned... Yeah, Jay when well. we mentioned Jason <laughs> Lee on the podcast, who was a random figure of fun in Premier League football 25 years ago... He had a pineapple on his head. People sang, he's got a pineapple on his head. And then he played for Watford for a bit. Can't remember who sent him. Indie clone? Was it Indie Clone? Yeah. Got him to do a little yeah, that's, message. That's, and that, that was funny. That, that yeah. was funny. That was well pitched. I'd rather you get me like, I don't know, Chris Akabusi doing it for yeah. a laugh than Luke Combs. I've looked for Chris Akabusi and he's not doing it anymore. Genuine. Devastated. <laughs> um, but when someone messages me and like, it's my birthday, could you do me a video saying happy birthday? I'm always like, for you. It, it, is that me or is that a bit odd? Yeah. Yeah. Don't take offence if you don't get one back, but there's so many people asking for them. No, do take offence. It's weird. Also, to, to, if you ask us what bars to go out in Liverpool and don't reply, that's because... Is that your least favourite one? Yeah. I, I have no offence. I just, I can't tell you where to go in Liverpool because I've had that many messages saying, I'm going to a stag do next week. Where should we... I'm not chip advisor. Just, I'm sorry, I just can't. My favourite one is when I get a DM going, hey, have you ever thought about getting Michael McIntyre on the podcast? Or, hey, have you ever thought about getting insert famous person who's funny here on the podcast? Yeah, we have. Yeah. We've thought about all of them. <laughs> Mate, I like the Jekyll and Hyde ones that start like, hey, Dan, you're fucking BMX riding nonce. In all seriousness, love you. you've really helped with my <laughs> mental health. <laughs> <laughs> it's been the roughest two years of my life, so, you know. Keep don't touching kids. Bye. <laughs> like it's, I, I, I like I like it. Non sandwich. But if I don't respond, it's just because it's a lot. Yeah, I respond to a lot of people. I'm trying to get out actively. of my DMs a bit. No, I I stay in them because I try and not reply to everybody. But if it's like, lad, where should I go to? I'm just like, uh, nah. If I tried to reply to everybody, I would never not be on my phone, and I'm already never not on my phone. 
that's something that Laura uh, really, we spoke about earlier in the year and she was like, when you come home, I just feel like you're not present. And yeah. it's because we, what happens is it's a weird thing where we sit here and record and we don't go on our phones. Like we don't do any business stuff about the pod. We just do the thing. And after the afternoon of it, if we've constantly had a guest in and we've been here like four hours, I realise I've got a bit of a backlog. So I was coming home and then going, shit, and this is before Steve was here, so there'd be fucking like stuff to do. And I was getting home from being out for six hours and then just being on my... And part of it was me trying to be too contactable in my DMs. So I've taken a step back. I'm trying to be better at that. Because uh, I just... A, th this is going to get crazy big. Yeah. You can't answer everything no I, I answer a lot though i'm having to try in social situations like when me and carl are together like we went to glasgow the weekend which we spoke about some patrons to see jerry cinnamon we're on our phones quite a lot in each other's company because we work together we've spent so much time together as best mates and we we're literally trying to make each other laugh constantly but it's very easy for me and you to both go on our phones i've started when it's in all the social situations I've, I'm making a proper conscious effort. And I, I know now, if my phone lights up with a notification, I'll go on it and then I'll check everything. So like, I've been on a couple of dates and I'm doing that. I'm yeah, literally yeah, yeah, yeah. face down and it's over there. And I'm like- A lot of people see that as a red flag, you know? What? Hiding your screen. Oh, no, but I mean- In a relationship, I mean. Oh, I yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You were yeah, the really that... suspicious fucking person, aren't you? Yeah. Me, yeah. me and Dean went for food before uh, the preview in Stourbridge on Friday. And- because it's Dean and he's supporting me on Dean Coglin from the Mile High Club. Because he's supporting me. He's working for me that night. We're mates. We get on really well. And it was dead nice hanging out with him. He's, he's a great support act. But he's also great behind the scenes. Dead chilled out. Like, loves what we do. I like what he does. He's great company. Cool but I just, I made the point of going, it would be fine for me to be on my phone. Because I'm like, we're sort of in it. This is a working thing. I was like, putting it there. Just fucking leave it. Have a chat. Have it's, a fucking meal, especially with your uh, with your partner. I, I, I have to do it, Be especially like when you, you're trying to get to know someone. You're like, because my ADHD is bad enough as it is, like trying to focus on someone. and I'm, You're trying to take an interest and trying to be interesting and respond to stuff. And, it, and also people are smart. You can tell like, but I hadn't actually thought that that is it. That is a well-known red flag, isn't it? Yeah. Because oh, it's like, you, what are you hiding? Yeah, because yeah. like, oh, I don't want you to see the notifications I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. All my banners, I don't. the only thing I get is Seneca, because that's the only person I want to reply to. Everything else is off, banner-wise. So my, my Instagram's off, and my WhatsApp is on apart from for groups. Oh, my God. So all my groups are muted until I go on the, the app, but like individual WhatsApps come through now, just for when I'm... Dressing room's bad. Dressing room's is one of those ones where when you're in a dressing room to just say you're in there for 40 minutes before a show starts, to be the dude that's just on your phone. There's like, fine, there's no rules, but it does make you look a bit like, I couldn't give a fuck about any of you lot. Like I, So that's something, when I'm in a dressing room, I'm on one-man shows now, I'm trying to not just be, because hanging out with comics in a dressing room can be sound, can be really good fun, but you're not there if you're like, that's yeah. one where I'm trying to, there's a lot going on with this, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a lot going on with tours and stuff. And that's all good, but it draws you onto the phone and yeah. then you're not doing anything. It and I say with kids, like I, Etta has in the past gone, oh, daddy, come off the phone. And you're like, oh, uh, God, oh, God. And you literally want to go, fuck off. But that's how I pay for everything. But that, that's so bad. Yeah. You can tell if I'm with someone I'm trying to make an effort with from my social media, like that night, because like I won't have added to my Instagram <laughs> story for like three or four hours. Yeah. Whereas if I'm in the house, I'm constantly on it, retweeting stuff. Me and Sarah can make a concerted effort not to be on our phones when with each other. There's a lot of times we're not with each other. It's not, with being on your phone for a bit's fine, but like there's a you've got to just like, have three or four hours off it, and then you go, oh, I'll, I'll do it when I'm what, going to sleep or whatever. But yeah, but they're very addictive, aren't they? Um, Coolio, let's have a little interval. Okay. Let's get on our phones for a bit, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, want to talk to you about our sponsor, NordVPN. I'm only just getting to know uh, VPNs. 
Adam is a massive fan, always has been. I use my VPNs primarily for like sport and stuff. Like when I want to watch Premier League games, they're being shown at three o'clock. They don't show them on Sky Sports or BT. I can set my VPN to Canada, for example, who show pretty much every Premier League game. My computer then thinks I'm in Canada and then it will let me watch the game as long as I'm signed up to whatever streaming service is showing it in Canada. You can also use it for Netflix. If there's a film that's not on British Netflix, but it is on, I don't know, Persian Netflix, set your VPN to Persia and watch The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> We've got three plans for users to choose from. Standard, which is VPN only, plus, which is VPN plus pass, and complete, which is VPN plus pass plus locker. So you've got options. The more you spend, the more stuff you get. Honestly, go for the top tier one. It will be the best money you spend every month. The promo code is have a word. Go to nordvpn.com slash have a word. Promo code have a word. Get a VPN and change your stream and life, kids. I just said, if you want to be my lover, you've got to get with my friends. And she was like, fine. Oh, great. Can't believe you shagging Mel B. <laughs> um, fine. Do you know what the B stands for? Big the ass. best. The best. Mel the best. Mel the best. What's yeah. C then? What? What's Mel C then? Mel, kind of good. Oh, oh, that hard C. <laughs> Oh, that hurt my mind. No, I said a hard C. I didn't bite it. You fucking put your rod up your ass, mate. <laughs> Don't go fishing with him, lad. <laughs> hey, there's no flies on him and no fucking pubes, neither. Use scissors, 10. Use scissors. Ten. By the way, I've changed the drink out for some sneak. So it's now sneak in here. Use code word 10. There's a code for everything. We're whores. <laughs> Um, if you could come and see me preview my show in Sandbatch or in Skipton in August, everything else sold the fuck out. Danspreviews.com, Sandbatch August 12th, Skipton August 27th. This show is already ready to tour. It could start tomorrow and it would fly. So you, you're basically getting the tour show for cheap. Um, talking about shows, Robbie Ross says, oh, that's what I used to call my father-in-law. Uh, Evening Lids. Robbie Ross. Rob Ross. Uh, evening lids we know you it's because it was his name I didn't just have a nickname for him his, his name wasn't Keith I called him Robbie Ross why? because I'm a sounds like flirt. a wrestler Robbie Ross yeah anyway Robbie Ross says evening lids we know you live bigging up all your guests and rightly so nearly all of them one or two are bell whiffs and rightly so but do, can you guess which ones? Why I think have you, you said can that? Uh, but do you why? know why can't we say that? Cause well, no because people go with one of the Every fucking oh, it's one with the you like. Bean. How many's the bean that we don't like? <laughs> we well, five, like three, five. No, they don't like or bad episodes. Both, three. I'd say. No, I can. I've I've already got more than three in my head. I've got three yeah, in my head. Yeah, there's a few. Evening lids. <laughs> <laughs> we know you love. We know you love bigging up all your guests minus three or five, <laughs> <laughs> and rightly so. But do you know who will be doing the fringe in Edinburgh this year? If so. Can we have a list, support the fellow lids and give us Edinburgh twats something to book? Already got the goats, Vittorio and Ishan booked. So if you yeah. go and follow the podcast at Have A Word Pod on socials, this week we will get the list of all the lids, all the good eggs that are doing the fringe. Vittorio's made so it. So follow us. At ha yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. We'll post that. Uh, we'll post it on the Patreon, patreon.com slash have a word pod. And we will give, it's all been put together. Vittorio, I mean, basically to help promote his show, but also because he's a good egg to promote everyone else's. There is a, a big chunk of former guests Lots. who are our mates. I'll, I'll run through up. them right now, just in case people don't want to wait for that. <clears throat> so Tom Stade is doing the Fringe. Um, I think Sarah Keyworth might be as well. Sloss is doing a work in progress Fucking run. great comics. All of them. Um, Pierre Novelli is doing the Fringe. Um, Phil Nichol usually does the Fringe. So I've I've got got the Sean list. Walsh is definitely doing the Fringe. I've got the actual Alfie list. Brown is doing... Ah, got the, the list. actual list. Okay, cool. Uh, Lauren Patterson, Vittorio, Luke Conran, What's Upset You Now, Gareth Four, Helen Bauer, Sarah Keyworth, Daniel Sloss, Roger Holt, Pierre Novelli, Garrett Miller, Kai Humphreys, Mala McCabe, Mark Nelson, Paul McCaffrey, Scott Bennett, Justin Morrow, Sean McLaughlin, Nisha Akbar, Hal Crutton, Ben and Reese, Finn Taylor, Larry Dean, Alfie Brown, Simon Brockton, Sean Walsh on his own, Bobby Mayer, Jamali Maddox, Jeff Norcott, and more to be added. Genuinely, if you went through that list, 90% of those names are some of the best episodes we've done as well. It, they're, they're, they are very strong former guests that are doing Edinburgh. I've seen Vittorio's hour. I would uh, be very surprised if Vittorio is not in the chat for best newcomer. He is 
different gravy, that lad, in terms of how smart he is, how funny he is. He's a fucking grafter. He's got an older head on his He's found shoulders. his voice four he's years in. And that is comic. an unbelievable and he's one of our own. Asset. Um, so follow us on socials at Have a Word Pod. I know it comes up, but uh, we will really push them because it's uh, it's not an easy game, Edinburgh, and it's a game that I am incredibly happy I never have to play again. We've got plans for next year. It won't be uh, a full month, but we have some plans, don't we? Yeah, we're just loosely throwing some yeah. ideas around. Um, yeah, we, we really do appreciate that you guys want to go and support our former guests because it's massive. When we're trying to get people on this couch, like the support you lot have shown our former guests, you know, comedians talk about it now. It's very, very valuable to get a, a seat on that couch for comics and, uh, yeah, continue to do it. We, we, we love you for it. Pe- people are listing it as like the credits, aren't they, Richard? I've I seen on Have a Word so on their posts. I love that stuff. So, so much. Mike Follow says, Wag Wag Lids, one for the quick fry round here. Oh, shit. <laughs> We're not doing quick round. Um, what would your drag queen names be? Cheers, Mike. P.S. I'd be Katie Pervy. Um, Penelope, fuck me ass. Penelope, fuck my ass. Lovely. Fuck me ass. It's a, fuck me. me ass. Yeah. Yeah. No word P-H- play. Just UK straight. Yeah. M E A P H S. Oh, f- oh, as in Phuket. Fuck me ass. Yeah. Oh, fuck me ass. <laughs> Hook me ass. Penelope, fuck me ass. Fuck me ass. <laughs> yeah. Are you actually going to try and look Thai as well? What? Yeah. No. Oh, no. 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 Just Iranian car yeah. wash guy. I'm not even putting a dress yeah. on. I'm just going to look like this. I'm just... I'm Penelope, fuck me ass. <laughs> get on me. He's a so fucking great car wash so doing this. Let me just get this right. You're a 30 year old Scouse lad <laughs> who's. Being a drag queen who identifies as a 30 year old Scouse lad. Yeah. It's fucking layers, that yeah, lad. Yeah. <laughs> layers. 2022, you tell me I can't be myself. <laughs> you tell me, yeah. I'm Penelope, fuck me ass, and you will refer to he me. He is a, like a Bosnian footballer from the 60s. He was too good for his time. <laughs> fuck me ass, wasn't he? Yeah. He's in the ball. Oh, he's got like, some stats. <laughs> fuck me ass. Yeah. He gets, he gets, <laughs> like, gets mentioned. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gets mentioned. The fuck me ass award <laughs> for the best assist. Yeah, he scored a hat trick with two broken legs. I love it when they're like, Yeah, did you hear about him? He scored five goals against Stoya Boy Carest and he'd already lost his head. He'd been decapitated in the first half. <laughs> they're just different players back then. They get decapitated and they just keep playing. These footballers these days. What's your name, Dan? One decapitation, they're like, Oh, my head's chops off. <laughs> Pussies. What's your Rusty? name? Drag name? Rusty Gusset. Oh. I've said it before, I like it. Carl, what's yours? Uh, bollocks Jefferson. <laughs> hey! Woo! Put it on the shirt. By the way, if we ever do something in drag, Carl won't play the game. Oh, fucking will. No, you won't. I bet you to do. He's it, just said he will. That's it. It's it's legally binding. If, that. if we're all dressing up as women, bollocks Jefferson. Can we do a drag queen special? Patron yeah. special, drag queen special. Would you, though? <laughs> I'm coming like this. I just told you this is my outfit. No, it, I, I'm not dragging up if he's not. I this know, is dragging up. But if this I, is who I identify if as. Adam, this is Penelope Fuck Me Ass. If in Adam's all their glory. Like, I'll get the kit on Sunday morning. The drag queens <laughs> thing Sunday afternoon. I'll do it Sunday morning. Leave me alone. Oh, I couldn't be asked. Listen, my lack of attention to detail has not served us wrong yet. Uh, if yeah. I start paying attention to detail, maybe things will go off the rails. Oh, don't you ever <laughs> apply that rhetoric to your fucking existence. Maybe I should try less. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try whenever I want to try and things always work out. Yeah, you do. Why would I change that? No, but you're very Jekyll and Hyde with how much you're into something. So there's sometimes when I'm like, oh my God, Adam wants this. And you're like, on my shoulders, let's do the lot. And other times you're like, yeah, I'm not asked. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, but I can't. uh, With the drag queen. Why can't you just accept me for who I am? (laughs) Oh God. There's a business partner. We're still here, mate. We're still here. (laughs) Come on, Penelope, fuck me. Drag queen, what, but what, in what format is, are we doing, are we doing a A live show? Are we doing a live show? Yeah, a catwalk. Oh. Drag race, what's that with you in a car? Yeah. No. I'm not doing that again. Like Go on, Finn knows drag quick. This is what he wanks to. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I know that Vittorio and Eshan both watch drag race as well, so maybe get them involved. Um, it's like you do like challenges. Have you ever watched like. What, like footy challenges? Top bins? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you'd but, have to be in full drag and you have to make like a but, fucking like, do like a quiche. sketch. You do like a sketch as characters or like a parody of like. Downton Abbey or something and sounds, write a song. That sounds it. so wank, it's unbelievable. It is, yeah. it, that is the point of the show. But if we were all dressed in you drag. You all do drag and you all play like 
say say we did a parody of now, Corey. Finn, in all honesty, yeah. If you dressed a drag and we put it on the internet, yeah. would your Turkish dad ever talk to you again? See, it surprised me. There was a drag queen at our hotel when we stayed there last week, and he didn't get stoned to death. No, he didn't. Oh, it's changed. The times are changing. Was like, the women, the women look are at allowed. This guy to, made dressing like woman, mate. I respect him, mate. Coming out as who he is, mate. No problem with it, me, mate. Chili garlic, mate. It's twenty twenty two. Let's act like it's nineteen ninety three. Yeah, that's turkey for you. You know what, mate? If he wants to wear a dress and have a dance, mate, who am I to say anything that doesn't affect my life, mate? Why would I care, no. mate? And maybe his dad didn't kill himself. I don't know, but it's good with future, you know? Can someone make us mock ups of what Penelope fuck me ass, Rusty Gusset, and Bollocks Jefferson would look like? Bollocks Jefferson. <laughs> Genuinely, I think he plays for the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> He's a fucking great wide Shit. receiver. Whoa. Well done. <laughs> you got caught there. Wow. <laughs> wow. Don't miss gender bollocks, Jefferson. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, have you seen the women's NFL? Is that a thing? women's NFL? No. Is it? Fuck. Is there a women's NFL? No. Of course there's not. There should be. There should there's be. Old, Let's invent that. There's a lot. We'll have a weird women's full NFL. Full contact, full field women's yeah. NFL. Lad. There is lingerie football. Where they basically pay on five side kits and it's really good. It's, they like, it's, great. it's pretty it's pretty good. I, I think there should be a woman's it's, NFL. I think it's disgusting that we've got to this day and age without that even being floated as an idea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. It would. Yeah, no extra point ever made. <laughs> Ow. Pathetic. Well, there's a first. Yeah. The kick yeah, the mean, kicking game. I mean you've done a freaky horrific. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can someone make us, someone could design what we'd look like, please? Finn, you'd probably be annoyingly attractive as a, uh, um, a drag queen. I put a filter on once that turns you into a woman and I look fit as fuck. Are you shaving your beard? What? Are you shaving your beard? Yeah, I'll wax it. I'll shave and wax it. But you, you'd Literally, never know I had one. We cannot talk about getting rid of hair anymore. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I used the Manscaped 4.0 to become a drag queen. They'd sponsor the special. Who? Manscaped. Oh, we'd have, we'd, we'd, we'd enough plugs. Um... Yeah, there's 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 episodes on Drag Race where they get like people like us that would just go on, never done it before, and then you watch some of them, you see them kind of turn into different people when they're on the stage. When you have got a pair of heels on, if you don't fall over, you'll be sound. We had a party when I had a penthouse in Manchester with my mates Andy and Craig. We had a, we it was at the it was my here dear. We were living in Manchester. We we're going out all the time. Andy DJed at a bar. Craig was good looking. I was at the comedy club. We had such a good crack. We had parties after parties, but we organised one proper fancy dress party in the middle of summer in Manchester. So many people turned up. It was quality. We did fancy dress music stars and. But like uh, Andy did Ziggy Stardust looked great. Can't remember what Craig did, and I did Lady Gaga. And I really went for it. I spent money. I got a wig, and the I really went for this. it. And I don't even. I'll try and find one. And as the party went on, we realised that very few people had uh, been told that it was a fancy dress party. So it just looked like three bisexuals having a house party. <laughs> and one woman talked to me. She was one of Andy's friends. She was a bit like, like dry. She was like, "Oh, you you, you look great." And I was like, "Yeah, nice one. Thank you." You know, that's what we do. There wasn't enough people wearing fancy dress, so she was just like, oh, he's a cross-dresser. She was like, I think it's really great, isn't it? You know, it's really great. I was like, yeah, it's going good. It's good. Really enjoying it. <laughs> in my head, I'm like, it is a good pie. And she's like, I just, I believe in what you're doing so much. <laughs> and then she was like, do you go to the village? I was like, yeah, sometimes we go out in the gay village if we're going out. It's a fun night once in a while in Manchester. She's like, isn't it brave that you can just go out and be yourself somewhere in Manchester? And I clocked it. I was like, she was like, this gay guy really needs my support. <laughs> Stood there in a wig and fucking. What have you done, Fancy Dress House? You've done a pimp. You've done. I've been a pimp. I've been Maverick. Maverick. We both um, I've been Morgan Freeman. Um... <laughs> Didn't black up though. We just did the voice. Yeah. Right, all right. Yeah. I knew when I walked into this party, it was for a lot. A lot. A lot. What have you dressed up as, Dan? So you've dressed up as Lady Gaga. I'm not a big fancy dress guy. Um, <laughs> I'm really not. I just went through it with that party. Whereas and I then, love it. <laughs> and I do it eight times a year. Yeah. No, but some people fucking buzz off fancy dress. Great. I'm trying to think. What's he had an idea for? 
What? You know, we're doing like a, a launch party for the new studio. I'm yes, like our guests. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shopping now. Can we make it black tie? Oh, no. Or oh, fancy Woods. dress. Yay! What we were talking about. Yes. We're going as Tiger Woods. I'm coming as Penelope. Fuck me ass. Rusty Gusset coming out. Oh, let's do fancy dress. Have I never done party. fancy dress before? Okay, I'll go as Bollock Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we launch the new studio, that's got to be what early September because we've got to get some. St- we've got to get in there to get it record ready, and then we've got to get it in there. Get in there. Oh, to we like, need to do fancy ready. dress record. That will be. So many people incredible. have asked me about this party. <laughs> like everyone's like, yeah, yeah. Now everyone's like, yeah, you're doing an arena. Yeah, you're going to sell out the Liverpool arena. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's just happening. I've got mates who are like, can I come to the launch party of the new studio? <laughs> oh, that fancy It's going to be a very exclusive invite. That's yeah. Don't get excited. Why don't we choose exclusive. each other's fancy dress? No. Oh, come on. Okay, then. Who loses there? Out of us. I'm three. not darkening my skin. It is a social faux pas and quite offensive. Faux pas? Oh. I think it's past that now. Right, yeah, but you... Yeah, okay. There's, we'll set rules. We'll challenge each other. No, Dan, you will lose that. We're horrible. I lose everything. You're coming Is as an adult it, baby. See, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> See, you've already lost. <laughs> That's a fucking easy win. I will just wear... What if I'm into it? Oh. No. What do you mean you'll just wear? You'll wear what you're told, oh. which will be a nappy and a dummy. I watched porn the other day a of a guy lying on a woman's she had big boobs and he was lying there and he was pretending to breastfeed and she wanked him off and I was like, so weirdly into it. It's great. So I honestly think if you stick a nappy on me and stick a dummy in my mouth. Is that I mummy could, porn? I got, what? Is that mummy porn? No, there was nothing. A, a, it, nothing it, about it said it was definitely a kid. It was, no, the guy was like 40 years old. <laughs> Is she younger than him? She, yeah, same age. But it was just the <laughs> same age. I think that breastfeeding thing. With all of you. That breastfeeding thing. Same. That, that, oh, yeah. oh my god, February. Yeah, March. <laughs> right, school year. Same school year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fancy dress for the launch party is going to be fire. I can't wait to sort my outfit. That we choose. Well, how are we doing, man? Come on, I'll pick I'm yours. Can't no, but I'm you not pick fins. No, because I'm not letting you pick mine. I'm not picking yours. That ain't happening. <laughs> is it? That ain't happening, dude. Yeah, Come but on. this is what I mean about when his head goes. We all picked drawers to see who was going round the new camp in a full kimp. What? <laughs> oh, I got a gimp in my man. Meant kit full said gimp. Kimp. A kimp was never doing a new camp tour in a full Barcelona kit. Or oh, did he? Or did I? I didn't. I was never doing it. I know, but that's what I mean. Sometimes you're like, yes, let's do it, and then the other time, like, no. Would would we if we pick? Would you wear a full kimp? Oh, I said it wrong. Though. Why don't we? Instead of just trying to ruin each other's right. lives, just all pick yeah. our own fancy dress outfit oh, and make it competitive. Right. Yeah, because I'm not not picking his if he's picking mine, and that's us gone then, isn't it? Yeah, because he's coming as I'm just going to dress him really badly. Looks like he's forgot his fancy dress, <laughs> but dressed bad. What about if we if we tie? This is so queggy. Tie up. What if we tie in? What if we do a matching, like there's five of us. What if we do a- The Raxon five? <laughs> Bagsy Tito. <laughs> Classic. Can we, can we do a five? Oh, can we do five? Bagsy the J. What with a big leather coat? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Simon Webb. He's only five, he's in blue. <laughs> can we do blue? Let's do four of them. Shit. Pogues. Let's do the Pogues with Kirsty McCall. Yeah, I'm coming as a speedboat. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking just run at you. <laughs> Knock it out. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I love fancy dress. You know. come back. I've been as a crip. Really? Mm. As in a blood, isn't it? Yeah. I've been as a crip. Wow. So what did you do? Just gangster up and wear blue? I had like face tattoos, neck tattoos. I had uh, gold teeth, a gun. Like uh, a do rag, all that kind of get all like flags and yeah, look sir. Oh my god, that's got, I might come as a scouser. I've just been given the shoes, so yeah, lad. I actually might come as a. F- no, you fucking won't. Cause that's just you're just gonna look better well. than you are. Oh day. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get fucking North Face everything. No, it is. That's and, just and you dressing just well. Walk around. That is just you with- dressing well. Oh, the best shoes you've ever owned. I, I am a forty-one-year-old father of two. I live in Sorgal. You will look I good. I can't dress in a full North Face fucking tracky. Walk around with me hands in my bollocks. Oh, drill. I'm going drill. I'm doing that with a balaclava. Yes. 
Oh, I'm going Scouse drill, mate. I'm going wild, mate. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Bollocks, Jefferson. I'm coming as a lab. Getting a carpet and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Problematic. <laughs> He's a problem. I am problematic. Don't care. Don't play by the rules. Apart from in snooker. <laughs> I'm coming as Mark Williams, the I'm Welsh potting machine. I'm just gonna smoke weed all night. Love potting. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. This is gonna be great. <laughs> By the way, the launch party will be what, like mid mid to early September. Yeah, so we'll be selling tickets on Patreon, and no, no, there will no. be what? What are you talking about? Ah, oh, come on, we're gonna. No, it's a very exclusive ticket. Oh, no, it? we're inviting right. our friends, and we're getting drunk and belligerent. Ten patrons. No, thousand pound tickets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you like to do a would you rather would you like to do a would you would you rather Mickey Thompson says wag wag lids interesting would you rather especially for Dan would you rather gravy on your apple crumble or custard on your Sunday roast uh, Mickey Thompson you're a paedophile and I will go gravy on the crumble yeah. yes I'm a apple crumble lamb with custard do you know what <laughs> I'm gonna go lamb. With, I'm gonna go lamb with custard. It's gonna be that I've got more chance of being that like being a sweet meat. No, but then you've got the veg. No, because like an apple crumble. Oh yes, yeah, an apple pie is it's an apple crumble. No, I'm still going gravy on apple crumble. Oh, lad. Gravy good. Oh lad, that's am I wrong? I'm, I'm, like I know custard on meat is wrong. It's a bigger. Uh, it's a bigger potatoes. meal as well. Yeah. It's a bigger. It's a bigger issue. Yeah. You bigger, can, bigger shoe. Yeah. No, you've got to drown it. Yeah, I'm got easy gravy on crumble, hundred yeah. percent. Paul Connor says, "Oh, we're doing a speed round. Would you rather?" If you're like, "Where's this music come from?" The Patreon episode. Are you a pube? Are you just public? Come on, bro. That's three pounds just spent all week, month. The one ten. that we anyway, just. I do think our, I was looking the other day when we, me and you, put together the list of all the specials we've done. I do think we might have the best value Patreon on the planet. It's not uh, even close. It isn't even remotely close. It's a weekly episode that is sometimes funnier, and then the specials and everything else we which do. Are Sixteen accumulate. specials now, you know. It's ridiculous. And everything else we do, we do the playlist. We've got all like there's so much. And we when we get in the new studio, we're doing another lock in, and we're going bigger. When we get the new studio, everything's going to get better. Yeah, but speed round. Would you rather have a stranger pick your tattoo, but you get to choose where it goes, or you pick the tattoo and the stranger picks where it goes? I'd rather have a stranger pick that tattoo. What a fucking shit question. Does it go in your face? Sorry it? for shitting on your questions. No, you don't like it when I do no, this. No, like my two, what, two favorite tropes. Shit question, just <laughs> fucking answer it. And the other one, when uh, can I have some advice? Just live your life and get on with it. <laughs> Remember why we're here, boys. The amount of fucking- It's fuck a stupid question though, isn't it? Like, if, if you get to pick where the tattoo goes, I go, oh, I like sound. I'll, I'll have live, laugh, love, which I actually wanted for a while. And you get to tell me I have to put it on my fucking head. How stupid is that? No, you can give me a swastika and it's going on me arsehole. <laughs> there's, not a, there's no amount of shaving down there. <laughs> I'm going to freshly shave my swastika. Yeah. <laughs> Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber. Wow. Yeah, of course. I can just hide it in my ass crack. And you can put whatever you want there, can't you? I don't want any tattoo on me face. I think the tattoo big enough that you couldn't hide in your ass crack. No. Like, you don't get to pick the like size the, of it, do you? Like the credits from Star Wars. <laughs> that in your ass crack. Or like a fucking gif. Move it. Yeah. <laughs> Tattoos Move have really tattoo. come on. Yeah. yeah, it's a stupid question. It is a stupid Shut question. up, Paul. <laughs> Ian Metcalf says, all right, lads, would you... Oh, I've just read it, stupid. End of pod. <laughs> all right, lads, would you rather, whenever you have sex, you're a two-pump squirt disappointment or be an absolute stallion in the bedroom, but whenever you shoot your muck... You, oh, what are we doing to these people? Do you, do you think they spoke like this before we started the podcast? No. We just addled their brains. <laughs> Every time you shoot your muck, you sing a random show tune. <laughs> I do that anyway. I don't know any. <laughs> As I come, Alexander Hamilton. Oh. Press the button. He's coming over your face. Uh, 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 Alexander Hamilton, the seventh gay president of Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh, he's trans. <laughs> I love that. He's trans. Have you watched Alexander Hamilton too? <laughs> trans in the habit. Trans, <laughs> trans, 
Shan's Atlantic. Shan's Atlantic. Come sorry. On, Come bro. on, bro. Come on, bro. I am um, fucking yeah, hell. This I wouldn't mind work. singing a show tune. I, I don't know finish. any show tune tunes, so I picked that one. You, have to you learn them, do you? know show tunes. Do I? Yeah, you do. What? Waving through a Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I would commit suicide in the bed. Uh, famous <laughs> Food. It's not a show tune. It is. As if she's not in your office. It's well. from. Is it? Is it? Is it from Oliver? <laughs> I've never seen her, so I don't know. Food, glorious food. They're the only words I know, so I just have to say that. Ah, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, but how long do you come for? Oh, food, glorious. Uh, Depends. Food, glorious food. Depends who I'm feeding as well. She's hot. Yeah. How many times are you going to stop this podcast dead in its tracks? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on with your brain? So I like you, but uh, um, it saddens me. Lay Miz is good. I like Lay Miz. <laughs> What's the dream, one? Dream. If you can sing that and jizz and not think about fucking Is it Look Down, the first one? Is it, what's it called? The way they're on the boats? Russell Crowe. What? Master and Commander. Is that it? No. When they, like, you the need to see some more musicals, yeah. No, it's the start. Of, have you seen Lay Miz? No. Shut up then. It's the start of Lay Miz. No, genuinely, I used to think it was about a fella called Les who was dead upset. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even messing. I genuinely believed for a long time. Les Miserables. It was... Les Miserables. Yeah, he's a French guy. <laughs> Translate as Miserable Les. <laughs> it doesn't like a Les Battersby spin off from not, Connie. Not, not a grumpy lesbian. <laughs> she can't get any flange. <laughs> Shade me biff for fuck all. <laughs> off to the snook hall. <laughs> That's where the lesbians go. <laughs> lesbians snooker. love snooker. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. <laughs> A hundred percent. That lame is too. Lesbians hey. love snooker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cartoon <laughs> called The Crucible. Um, yeah, yeah, come on, if you're a lesbian, give me a shout out. Uh, lesbian, we need pictures of lesbians playing snooker. <laughs> Have a word on gmail dot com. Come on. <laughs> hey, and I tell you what, there'll be no miserable lesbians there. They'll be well happy. Like, hey, yeah. I'd sing something from Come From Away. Actually, I'd stand back. Uh, yeah, welcome to my cock if you come from my way. So you can sing the shop song and do my fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, this one. I don't want to go and see another musical, you know. Oh, can it not be one that Lynn manuel and Miranda's had anything to do with? Because I know he's good, but you, I want you to start singing some fucking Jungle Book or something. Oh, Jungle oh, Book. You, why do you jungle hate book. Lynn manuel Miranda? <laughs> Imagine that when you jizz. It's quite good doing that though, isn't it? Because you're calling yourself a lion. Because oh, there's a lion coming. No, oh, yes, it's a lion, and you're coming. Cheers. I am a lion. Yeah. And I, Ibrahimovic, more of a warthog. What? I said all right, Ibrahimovic. Oh, I'm the king of the swinger room, the jungle VIP. See, these are bangers. Stop I'm saying shit cat. ones. Why to the shop? They're not really shows. Are they though? No. Oklahoma is the one that I always go to. I don't know like that because of Chandler. Cheesy fucking <laughs> Bugsy Malone. We could have been anything that we wanted to be. Doom, 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 doom. The jizz will come out tomorrow. tomorrow. Probably not Get good to think of Bugsy Malone though like when you're jizzing, tomorrow. is it? Because it's you jingle know, bells, jingle bells. Oh, that's, that's a Christmas song. That's isn't a Christmas it? song, isn't it? <laughs> fucking <laughs> hell, Lloyd Griffith. Um, <laughs> Ian Metcalf, speed round. Ian Metcalf says, I've already asked a question, Dan. Don't read it out. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> uh, Adam Briggs says, would you rather suck one dick a day for 365 days? And that is a uh, court-appointed dick. Uh, or suck 365 dicks in one day to get him all out of the way. That sounds like now, such a hang busy on, evening. Hang on. You know? I am going to give you... How'd you get a cab from I there? am going to give you... Like one of them quotes where you get a discount for paying up front. Oh, like your insurance. Yeah. So it's if you pay one a day, it's a dick a day for a year. But pay up front, suck all them dicks. I'm going to give you a... This is the price. I'm going to speak to my manager on this one. 200 dicks oh, in one wow. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the discount I can like 40% give. 40% off in it. Sort of it is, it is. But I've, you know what? I'm going to sweeten the deal. I'm going to say 185 dicks in one day. And that's you, that's you done. Uh, what, I'm gonna ba basically fifty percent off, guys. Fifty percent. I've just spoken to my manager, and that's not a that's not a deal we do for a lot of people. Right. Okay. So based on me being awake for sixteen hours, which is ambitious. Yeah, because you're gonna set the alarm for the dicks. So okay. That's still eleven and a half dicks an hour. Do I have to do this to completion? 
So I have to suck men off and make them come every five minutes. Right. Okay. Just doing nice. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me let's set the rules out here. You've got to suck the dick for at least five minutes. But if you can get them to finish within the five, you get a bit of time back. And you're not a swallower. So if he goes, oh, bloody hell, I'm, I'm about to spaff. Oh, Oklahoma, you can get me. I'd rather do one a day. I think I don't, I don't want to do that afternoon. Oh. What about your wedding day? What? <laughs> don't get married this What's year. What about your wedding? Just don't get no, married no, no. that year. Don't get married that year. How would you explain that to your, your fiancé? What, that I suck a dick every day? Yeah. Why am I now engaged? <laughs> No, this by the, the way, by the way, on your wedding day, you don't see the bride till the altar, so you have to just do it early. <laughs> just getting your fucking. Oh, Christmas on. Day. Oh, uh, that's sad, isn't it? Everyone's Christmas lo- Eve. Every- yeah. Every- no, it would be awful. Uh, neither of these options. Nine eleven. I'm not cute. What? Oh, you ain't doing admin as well. Imagine that. One last thing to do every day. Oh, imagine that. We're like, oh, I'm just going to have an early night. Your birthday. I really enjoyed today. Zip. And then you're like, oh. Imagine your birthday. Horny my mood. It'd all it. be awful. But I imagine, look, I'm I'm doing one a day for the year. I appreciate the discount, but I can't do that no, day. It's if you bring it down to 50, I could probably do it. He's bartering. Dan, come on. If I do 50 in a day, I'd take that. Mate, 365. You're going to put me out of business here. I'm going to I'm going to speak to my manager. <laughs> I'm going to speak to my manager. Right, there is an offer on. It's a Whitsuntide offer. What's that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can take it down to 125 dicks in a day. No, I can't, exactly. literally, I can't go any lower. Well, then I'm doing one a day then. Right. Do you take the deposit? Let me, just, let me just speak to head office. Hiya, head office. Oh, shit, that's a can. <laughs> um, I'm going to start calling you David Dickinson. I'll give you an offer. I'll pay a chimpanzee. I literally I'll cannot go. I'll pay you the chimpanzee to not be able to have to be there. Any lower. Give you a chimpanzee. 100 dicks in a day. No. Come on. Do it. I'll do 125. Oh, 100. Did you lower it? 100. <laughs> <laughs> Couch to go back up. Hey. 400. I'll, <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do the 100. I'll do 25 for the love of the game. I'll do 100 in a day. I think once you get to 100, to be honest with you, yeah, the, the extra 25, you wouldn't even... When you've done 10, it's yeah. basically... It's like when you... like Obviously, I'm a big runner now, aren't I? Once you get to like 40 minutes on a treadmill, that extra 20 to the hour is fine. What do you think your hump is with the dicks? 20, 35? What, the, the, where you 40. start gassing? And you're like... <sighs> <sighs> yeah. I reckon 1 to 20. I reckon the first one feels awful. And then you get past that, and you get around to around 20, and if you push past 20, I reckon you're all right then. I would... I'd suggest Glory Hole might be the way to go on this. You don't want to because see I don't want to look up and have them go, oh, all right, how are you doing, Adam? I remember you from year 10. No, oh, like, Mr. Beach is there. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Beach is Brandon there. Brandon Beach, you fucked dumb. several children, allegedly. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, let's have a break. Children. <laughs> That's so allegedly. Do you remember what the headline allegedly. was? So allegedly. Do you remember what the headline was? These do not represent the opinions of the podcast. What was the headline? Brandon Beach bombs boys. It wasn't it. I've got nine. Yeah, allegedly, I've got ninety nine problems, but a beach ain't one. Wouldn't it be the Beach Boys? I've got a ninety nine problem. I've got ninety nine problems, and a beach is one. Yeah. That would be better, wouldn't it? Beach and it's the girl doing her story. She's like, oh, the Beach Boys. The biggest problem is that the teacher fucked me. Glad we've ended on that again. <laughs> Hundred dicks in a day, one twenty five for Carl. He's a thirsty girl. He's an advert. All right, lids. We've got a new Manscaped advert. Hey you, yeah you, God Bush. You definitely do. If you haven't tried the best products from our sponsor today, Manscaped. Taking control of your bush is important. Isn't it, Carl? These products are so good, you're going to be showing pride in your new bush-free yard. It's a fact that you will have the best-kept nutsack on the cul-de-sac. Save big and be the most hygienic version of yourself by using our discount code WORD20 for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. That's the blurb. In all truth... Of all the sponsors we've been uh, attached to since we started the podcast, Manscaped is one of my absolute favourites. They've sent us all of their stuff. The Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 is an amazing bit of kit. It's got a light on it. It's really well done. It reduces nicks and everything. I've used it since we got it free for like a year and a half. Laura's been using it. Clean up your pub area. They're talking about bush here. No one needs a big old hairy nutsack. You need to think about it. If you want someone touching it, kissing it, give it a trim. 
Use the Lawnmower 4.0. Get on Manscaped. Have a look at all their products. Manscaped.com. The promo code is WORD20 for 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped.com. Get on me. He never loses. He never <laughs> loses. It's so annoying. He always finds a way to win the... Uh, Alan Cochran's in! Hey. Welcome to the show, mate. Thanks for coming in. Hello. Are you all right? I'm all right, yes. It's a very jazzy shirt. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sometimes I like to wear something that is at complete odds with my personality. <laughs> <laughs> Today is one of those days. I always I always entirely match my personality to my clothes. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> chest out. Turkish personality. <laughs> Hello, mate. Welcome to the podcast, mate. It's going to be good, mate. Is that for audiences just to get them off, off kill? Like, this guy seems like a happy chap. You look yeah, at that yeah. shirt. Three minutes in, like, oh, oh. So, oh why is everything so miserable? <laughs> but, yeah, that's basically that. No, every now and again, I try and wear some colours because it's good for my eyes, which are blue. Right. Oh, it does bring them out. Yeah, it does bring you. them out. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I feel seen, what as they eyes? say online. Like greeny brown. You've got oh, hazel. You've got the same. Whoa! <laughs> I know it's always always open, but closing a bit. You're the same eyes as me, Adam. Hazel, we're hazel. Both, we're both hazel. Hazel, uncommon. That's yeah. not that. It's is it really? unusual, isn't it? Hazel oh, eyes. Right. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I should wear hazel then. It's you've got a hazel hat on. That sounds good, doesn't it? It's green, isn't it? I think it's dark green, but I'm it's also colour blind. So, so am I? That's... Are you colour blind? Yeah. Fucking get in. It's very what, what are you? Do you know? Very common in males. You reckon I mean. green? I think I'm quite a lot. You know those dot pictures? That oh, I yeah. fail them all. Yeah, they give up on me very rapidly. <laughs> so <laughs> sort of really what colour is this then? Red, on, red on green's the one I can't do, but that's very common apparently. Yeah. Are you, you colour blind? Yeah, the red on green. Uh, it's weird at school because they did it at school, didn't they? And there was like a number mm -hmm. within the like coloured dots. Yeah. And I was like, this piece of piss, I do everything well at school. It's easy. And then you got one up and it's quite a weird feeling as a kid to be like, I can't fucking see that. Yeah. And then everyone's like, you can't see they that. They were all stuck behind me going, what do you mean? There's a four. I thought I was like, I, I, no, I, I can't. Need, can I just say this is the weird... first time in my life I've been sat in a room thinking, I've got the best eyes. <laughs> 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 I, I think I'm colorblind to all of them because I fail all of right, them tests. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't see any. Me. And apparently red, green, color blind. I don't know if this is a fact, but it's one of those things that I was told years ago and then I now believe as a fact. I did this with Concord. I thought Concord to Australia from the UK was two hours until yeah, yeah, right, yeah. 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Someone told me years ago that it's in the highway code that you have to wear fully fashionable shoes. I don't think that's a fact. I think it's just a thing I was told. No, I have heard you. If, you call, if there's a crash and you get out in flip-flops... Yeah. You can get, you know. It makes sense, but yeah. I don't know if it's in there. No, I don't of? think. No sliders is not someone, in there. Someone, someone once told me that tattoos keep you warm, and even though that's obviously bollocks, <laughs> there's still a bit of my brain that believes it. Like, there's still a bit of my brain that's like, oh, yeah. And every time I think it, I have to then undo it and go, that's obviously a joke. <laughs> But the it's colourblind tattoos. one is apparently in the war that used to take people that were colourblind up onto hills because they can see camouflage against the green. So oh. I think that's pretty believable. Oh, shit. So they would take colourblind people up because yeah. they can see the camouflage against yeah against the stuff it's meant to camouflage into? Yeah. Right, okay. Do you know but what we again, can't... it may be bullshit. Like yeah, it sounds like stuff. absolute nonsense. It also sounds like a forces. shit job, doesn't it? <laughs> Colourblind Dave. Like, you go up, stick your head above there. You tell me where, the tush, where we've lost another. Do you know we can't be in the armed forces? Uh, well, I can't on several criteria. But <laughs> 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 Matt Jonas being number one. But, no, uh, be colourblind, you can't be in the armed forces. Why? Because it goes down to, one, traffic lights. You also can't be a train conductor. And right. two, cutting wires. You just cut the wrong colour because you can't see yeah. it. <laughs> Even if you want to work in army admin. Yeah. yeah. Just what in if you case. just want to work in the office? Put all the stuff in the wrong drawer. I, I was drawers. told you can't work in the armed forces if you're called oh, You just can't be a bomb disposal expert. No, it wasn't that niche. Yeah. When, my, when, my grand, when my grand found out that I was colourblind, red, green, green, red, she bollocked my granddad because it's from him, apparently. He's colourblind. And she went, brilliant, Bob. Now he can't be a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, fucking eight. I was like, Gran, where do you think this was going? I am not one. trending towards pilot. Do you get the bullshit of what colour is that then? Yeah. And like, that's not how it works, is it? You just have to Yeah. Squat. I mean, I thought this shirt was black and white until we started this <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> Carl's c c colourblind, but it, when it comes to race, he really sees it. Oh, yeah. right. 
Yeah, it's it. He really is. He's calling like, in people quite a he's lot. Like, no, I see it because I know how to oh, include yeah, okay. everyone then. Right, no, serious. he's like, he's like, gets, he's not just like Asian, he's like fucking Sri Lankan. <laughs> right. And it's the fucking that really. I've like, never like, called like, anyone. Oh, have you not, Carl? Was it a joke? <laughs> fucking rat. He's going to start doing the voices. That seems to be what this podcast is mainly about. Isn't hey, it sells, mate. Listen, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, we, I didn't think it was hate, but it seems like, <laughs> seems like there's we're a just really bad at accents. That's right. what it is. So I can do <laughs> my Geordie accent for you if you like. Some people will get upset with it. They're not uh-huh. Geordies. <laughs> No, it was. De- I definitely saw a clip of Dan doing some kind of Asian accent. No, 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 that was his Coventry. <laughs> that was his Coventry. That's what I got sacked for, by the way. <laughs> it's amazing when you don't have a boss. <laughs> I have a theory about it, because you're in this, like, you know, you're in a little sort of booth and the rest of the world doesn't exist. It's, it's exactly like when people that. pick their nose in their car. Yeah. Like, they own their car, so they think, oh, well, I can do what I want. They forget that <gasps> Alan, the walls are see-through. you're so right. Like We've actually haven't. talked about it recently. The, the audience behind these cameras is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. And we've added two members of staff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't used to say pussy and with a hard P. And all of a sudden, <laughs> right. because right. these knobs are like, pussy. Yeah, it's not a pussy. I know, I'm using it in my vernacular. I, uh, and comedians come on and we say it. And I've seen very good, not like woke comics go, oh, yeah. people don't talk like that. And you're like, oh, we do in a yeah. cupboard. The yeah. cupboards. Because to us, no like one's it. listening yeah. apart from us. Yeah. So this, it feels like we're backstage at a comedy club with three mm. of our mates who are also not comedians. But there's a, mil- hanging around. a million people listening and watching every month. 1.2 1. 1. 2 million 1. a 1. month. 1.2 million. Wow. <laughs> the 72 trillion people could be listening. But it is 1.2 million. Oh, right, sorry. I don't know why you're trying to take the piss out of our numbers then. All right, good. That's good. 72 uh, trillion. But yeah. Sri Lankan. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I don't mind doing That's why we're so good, because we'll never change. We'll never be scared of the cameras. We'll always be us, no matter Scared what. of the cameras? All right, all right, <laughs> Yeah, but you'll never be a pilot. Yeah. Um, I don't really get it. With a hard What's pain. the problem with being a pilot if you're colourblind? Why? Why, why is that? colour-coded switches. Yeah. So if you think or just, of... just, just change it up for John the fucking colourblind pilot. Just put a little label on it saying, fly... And then don't, don't fly. Fly. crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cross through that one. Don't press that crash button. Yeah, just In fact, that's the off. first thing we teach you. We shouldn't even color code that. Yellow <laughs> means crash. Why well, should button make the there? button? <laughs> oh my god, right? You're right, guys. Oh god, thanks for pulling that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking quakes. Sri Lankan air. Are you in a mood No, but I mean, don't be a fucking full head the ball. A fucking chimpanzee. I don't. I think you should be allowed to. I, I think it's very ableist, actually, of the armed forces to be excluding you guys. You can't be mm-hmm. in the armed forces with hay fever as well. And I've got that. So that's I, got I, to I, be bollocks, hasn't it? No, I mean on the front line for that one. I think <laughs> it's got to be bollocks. Hasn't well, you it? can't be shooting your gun and sneeze and miss, can you? And then someone blows your head off. So right. can you not be in the armed forces if you've got a cold either? Well, also depends when you had the cold. The- the sneezing thing would be bad for disguising and yeah, hiding exactly. out and yeah. being an SCS. I think hay fever and being a sniper, that's yeah, probably really incompatible. That's just, yeah, that's makes sense, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I just don't know. It's almost like we're trying to get in the armed forces. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, episode is sponsored by the armed forces. <laughs> use gun ten. Do you remember the high the high street shop? The forces like oh yeah, the air force, the army. Oh yeah, it'd be a shop just mm. to. If you wandered out of college and just got a bit ahead of yourself, come in, come in. Just mm-hmm. had to sign there. I went to the TA twice. I was a, <laughs> when I was a kid. I'm not even messing with you. Yeah, pictures. I, no, no, no. I don't, I don't think I was there long enough. I literally went for two like things, and they're like, right, yeah. So you're in now. And I was like, I'm not coming back here. So the way they spoke to me, spoke to me like shit. Yeah, they yeah will do that. <laughs> Almost like there was some sort of ranking system. Yes, yeah, they were just fucking some... rude. Am I not a general? <laughs> yeah. Adam, can I start? I don't want to start there. Can I start there? <laughs> yeah, they're they were just quite a they were just, There's still no need for the way these fucking grown men were. I was a kid and he was like, stand in line. I was like, who the fuck are you, you talking to? You cannot be told anything <laughs> no. by anyone. <laughs> can why you? am I respecting this fucking no, divorced cunt in Chilwell? Was, <laughs> was there ever anyone in your life who sort of told you something with authority and you went, yeah, fair play? Like, I, literally, teachers, all gobshites, <laughs> telling me what to fucking do. I'm fucking 12, <laughs> cocky ass bastard, <laughs> deputy fucking head. Well, my natural instinct when someone tells me what to do is yeah. to tell them to fuck I'm off. <laughs> like, I've just got a natural, me, me initial, if someone tells me I'm doing something wrong, my literal first thought is, no, I'm not, and you're a prick, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I have to override that. 
you know what I mean? For the t- and for the I'm army. so sort of self-assured and sure of who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's very... That's been a tough couple of years for you when we're in supermarkets with fucking arrows on the floor. I just didn't gotta, follow them. Yeah, just didn't yeah, yeah <laughs> but, but it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's, I've been... Um, I've been talking about how I'm I'm going to go back to normal toothbrush because when I use an electric toothbrush, you know when it goes zzzz, and it's basically saying stop brushing your teeth. I'm like, fuck off, I'm doing an extra minute. <laughs> Why is everyone telling me how to run my life? <laughs> so, yeah. You know you've gone full libertarian when you're yeah, yeah. rebelling against a toothbrush. <laughs> <Yeah>. Conspiracy. <laughs> Who's this made? Yeah, yeah. Which corporation? Big pharma. <laughs> yeah, Big toothbrush. Yeah. People yeah, say I've got anger issues. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but the t- the t- I I wanted to join the army at that point in my life. Yeah. That was honestly the stupidest thought you've ever had. Oh mm. wow! Well, what kind of army are you in? What do you mean? You can't take any orders. And you literally just can't. Every time someone tells me what to do, my instinct is say, "Oh fuck off!" Like, how were you ever in your head going to be in the army? Because I hadn't done this much self reflection when I was fucking eleven. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I now know who I am, and I now know and understand. I've got a natural rejection of authority. When I was 11, I was like, I want to go abroad and kill foreign people. <laughs> and that bit still does sound good. Yeah, fair play. Ooh. That sounds bad in the cupboard. I wanted a gun. Ba- I wanted a gun and a war. Right. You and I got told to fucking tie my shoelaces and I was like, fuck you, John. What year Not was coming this? Back. What year was this? 2003. 2003. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. So Iraq and all that had kicked off. At the time, I'd been you indoctrinated by the media you and I ready. thought they were the enemy. So yeah. I was like, I'm going. I'm going like, to fucking right. kill Bin Laden. Doesn't like, know what's coming. The Corporal end. Row, this is where you're going. Iraq, <laughs> fuck off. I'm not going where you tell me. That's who, went off, that's who went off to Bin Laden, by the way. The local branch of the TA. In the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> get them in. You know, no. get them. Well, I couldn't join the army because it was only 11. Yeah. I wanted to. It was my oh. way of doing Did you wear the rig out? The TA is like the youth system, innit? Did you wear the art? Uh-huh. The little bidet. It's the academy. The Territorial Academy, I think it's called. I got turned down in those, one of those army shops in Huddersfield. For wearing that shirt. <laughs> yeah. I went, You're going to stand out a mile, mate. I went in and basically said, oh, yeah, I think I should join the army. And, and he pretty much figured out, essentially, you're just an unhappy teenager. You don't really want to be a soldier. You just don't like Murfield, West Yorkshire, where you're growing up. And he basically said, you should think about this a bit more. I bet that guy didn't last long in that job. No, because yeah, yeah. Unhappy teenagers have been fueling the army for yeah, fucking you'd think, centuries. You'd think, but no, he, uh, he saw He's like, you want to go in the arts, mate? <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> what a progressive... You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> what a progressive armed forces recruiter. To be honest, Alan, I can see you in dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about the theatre? Did you never think of doing anything like that? I mean, because they had a shop... Like, yeah. if there was a shop on the high street in Preston that was like, join the circus, I'd have a look in there as well. Mm. You'd they be had great a in the circus. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking would as Bearded well. lady. I could see you being a trapeze artist. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. <laughs> God, you'd be really good at it. <laughs> cut, with cut a colourblind fucking trapeze artist. Mm. Surely you're not reeled out from that. Probably. I do understand that certain disabilities do limit your options in life. I had a mate, mm. I think we might have mentioned this at some point on the podcast, who had Tourette's and he got fired from a restaurant that he was working in. Right. Because he wanted to work on, he wants to be a waiter and they were keeping him in the kitchen. <laughs> and he was like, but I want to be a waiter. And they were like, well, look, lad, you, you've got Tourette's and you can't be yeah. like telling the customers how big their tits are. <laughs> so we're right. going to need to keep you in the kitchen. That's just not, that's just something you're not going to do. And he was like, well, that's actually really ableist and you've got to, uh-huh. you've got to let me out onto the restaurant floor. So he, he quit slash was fired and come to me for sympathy when it was like, can you believe this? And I was like, yeah, I can. Yeah. yeah. If I ran a restaurant, I wouldn't want you going, oh, fucking tits <laughs> in customers' faces. Yeah. So you'd do anyway. <laughs> can I yeah. just say, if we get a restaurant, can we actively try and hire people with Tourette's? Oh, I to be look. fair, I don't think they stand out from most chefs that <laughs> I've met because they are swearing and, and oh, angry yeah. and oh, yeah. direct. So, so aggressive. Feels like it'd almost be a qualifying. There's natural selection involved with yeah. that. People who go into catering, yeah. if they are grumpy Italian men, borderline racist, abusive to anyone under 21, they, they're men to be in the kitchen. Yeah, you're done. But things have changed now. It's 2022, Alan, whether you like it or Is not. It? <laughs> Shit, we're, in the like era, it. we're in the era of the bossy toothbrush. 
And if you've got Tourette's, you can be anything you want no, to be. You, cannot. you can be an announcer no. for Channel 4. <laughs> Can't be a librarian. Next, come fucking dine with me. <laughs> what? Can't be a librarian. Why? Yeah. You wouldn't Too accept loud. that. Too loud. No, that's. You literally can't cite that. If you apply. You can't have sound at all. You can't saying, Shush. Cite, I'm, I'm pretty sure employment law will not let you go, yeah, you've got a disability, you can't do that job. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you don't say it. You just, you know, you say it's something else, like we don't like how you dress or whatever. And <laughs> you don't tell them it's because you keep calling everyone who wants to fucking hire pride and prejudice a cunt. You just tell them <laughs> there's another reason, don't you? You've got to be a bit subtle and have a bit of fucking decorum. You can't be like, oh, that fella wanted the fucking BFG and you call him a fat gobshite. So no. <laughs> tell me you wouldn't be going to your local library more if they had a library. Yeah. In fact, what job is less... Go Come on. Can you just like, pull on the string? He wanted the B... Hello, can I have the BFG, please? No, you fuck up shit. Also, who hires a book? I love libraries so much. I go all the time. I know how to hire a book. Pride and Prejudice. You, you borrow. I mean, it's on, on a technicality. You made it sound like Blockbuster. Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst job? Exam invigilator? That'd be bad. Yeah. Just screaming while everyone's trying to do the exams. <laughs> Paramedic, I think. Funeral director. Yeah, Undertaker. <laughs> Wanker! Like, was, yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> I'm fully in. And we lay John to rest. Cunt! <laughs> He's an absolute fucking twat. His wife's got tits. Amen. <laughs> and also with you. <laughs> Do you know they changed that a few years ago? Which? Catholic changed Church. What? Are you, were you raised Catholic or any sort of no. uh, Protestant? Uh, I know more about Protestantism, but yeah. uh, no, I was raised pretty atheist. Really? Yeah. Both m mum and dad? Well, my dad died, but my mum took that as a sign that there probably wasn't a god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Is that really me? This this pot just went up a gear. Another dead parent. Yes. Sometimes people get really uh, like sort of mawkish about it, but pissing yourself is a way better response. You're the I only like person even two parents. Like no, like together. Steve's the only one with the nuclear family. When I was starting out in comedy, I was the sound tech, the hyena, oh, in. Yes. Uh, in um, <laughs> In, and Alan was one of the first comedians that came up and you were sort of, there was a, there a lot of older comics that came and then there was like comics that were like four or five years older than me. Right. And I re they were like, you were like the cool kids. I know that seems, uh -huh. like, but this is 21 it, years it ago. It seems extraordinary. Jason John Whitehead was on last, last week. He yeah, was, yeah. you know, and uh, I remember cool you were very nice to me. We went uh -huh. out into Newcastle one day and you were chatting away, and I was obviously dead keen and wanted to do loads of gigs, and you were, you, uh, at one, uh, you were close to going, and shut the fuck up about it. Like, no. You, no, no, you didn't, but you didn't. Very I remember unlikely. you going, I remember you going, have you died yet? And I was like, no, I haven't died yet. And you was went, I? it's in the post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I also, I also <laughs> mentioned that my mum had died when I was 16, and you went, oh, oh, my dad's dead. <laughs> Good comics have dead parents. <laughs> And I, I remember being like, yes, yeah, yeah. me and Cochrane are part of the dead parent crew. And here's Adam, fucking dead mum. Me, Milo McCabe and Ishan Akbar every Edinburgh used to have dead mum club where whenever we had like a bad day, we'd all just go for a pint and talk about our dead mums. Right. <laughs> Called it the DMC. Dead mum, it's not a day of band. <laughs> yeah. Just to get- You're thinking of Red Rum Club. Oh, you're thinking of DMX. <laughs> uh, is it not Run DMC? <laughs> Yeah, it was from DMC. It was. It was from DMC. <laughs> run, Dead Mom's Club, run. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, I mean, that know. does put it in context, doesn't it? Oh, I've got a three-star review. Yeah, but your mum's dead. Mm. <laughs> Get over it. And she yeah. didn't write it. Um, <laughs> yeah, my mum was the religious one. My dad was the atheist. She died, so he was right, wasn't he? Yeah. He, he called it early. We were, like, both of my parents were Catholic. But like, but default Catholic. Yeah, default. But my mum was always like, sort of, th there is a God and he is watching, but don't really worry too much about He's it. He's a right. gobshite <laughs> telling me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off, God, you judgmental twat. <laughs> Who are you? The army slash teacher slash any fucking traffic warden. <laughs> Go on, council. 
I just don't understand why people just t- take shite from people they don't need to. I, I <laughs> yeah, it's how the world religion and- religion wise. I don't think it's a, a, a bad idea to just keep it away from kids. Why religion, f- yeah. yeah, right. I'd love it if we could. Like the only primary school in our village is C of E, <laughs> affiliated to the church next to it. You just got no choices unless you want to drive to some secular primary school. Mm-hmm. And I, I've, I'm a man of ethics, Alan, but mm-hmm. not at, you know school yeah. drop off two pound a litre. Fuck that. Yeah. Serica's having to. So Serica's teaching like sex education and stuff, and she's having to watch what she's teaching the kids because of religion. She's like because like, she's at a religious school. It's not, I'm not, I'm, I don't know. I'm not, maybe I turn out saying, but she can't say the real shit uh-huh. because they're getting taught. The fake shit first, and then they learn how to be a human afterwards. Mm. She's having to hold back on telling kids how to protect themselves and look after themselves because mm. fucking religion exists. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's uh, just it'd be great to keep that if you could just separate that. Like the Americans have definitely got that right, where religion and education are separate, aren't they? They do, but they also have that weird thing where they pretend that they separate church and state, but then none of their politicians ever admit to being atheists. And if they do, they're out of the running yeah. straight Yeah, it's deeply away. religious, isn't it? Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? I've got an idea for the schools. I think every kid, you bring them away from their parents, first day of, like, year four, and you just ask them what religion they want to be. And whatever they say, that's what you teach them. So you'd be like, right, you can be a Muslim, you can be a Jew, you can be Catholic, you can be a Hindu. Whichever one you want. <laughs> what, why was this thing on that? Uh, fucking Hindu. I don't really know what they believe, other Buddhist. than the cow thing. I think Buddhist is the one that you... you Quaker. Think. They're the good ones. They're, they're just Christian, aren't they? They're a form of Christian. Cool, then. So, you just, and you just say to each kid, you just have a list. You're like, what do you want to be? Muslim. Okay, you're over there. And then whatever, you separate them into those classes, and then you literally teach them whatever they've decided. Like a pack be, lunch. Funnier. Right. Funnier. <laughs> That's what you want in education? <laughs> Funnier. Do you not think it'd be good, like, the sorting hat on Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah. Um, I see great Muslim. <laughs> That'd be phenomenal. They just put the, the religious sort in that. If he's just like, oh, I see you're going to be good with Jew. <laughs> <That'd> be- <laughs> good numbers. Go- what? Yeah, numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're a numbers. fat, lazy shit that wants to sit around all day. Mm, buddies. <laughs> Brilliant. I'd be, I'd be into that. I don't you know what you feel it. You know, like in in Harry Potter, when it gets like gets like a foot away from Drake home out of his head, <laughs> and it's just like you're slithering and you mate. It was a really fat kid, and before he never got anywhere near. Like, Buddhist, he's like, what? <laughs> Why is Buddhism fat? Because Buddha's got a belly. Buddha is, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what they believe? Um, <laughs> no, Adam. What do Buddhists? They believe? like sitting around thinking about stuff and eating. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much it. And if they're good at that, where do they go? What do you mean? Well, what do they believe in? Reincarnation. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. come back as like a fucking lion or a zebra or whatever you want. I think you get up there and he's like, what do you want to be? And you get to go back down. Muslim. He does. <laughs> Who? He. Buddha. HR. Who? Our Buddha's doing. <laughs> All right. Good. How good were you were sitting on your ass? That good. Did the sorting hat give you Buddhism? Nice one. Yeah, you're yeah, all right. Ah, <laughs> uh, lad. Bad. Pigeon. That's where you got. Just can be a fat pigeon. <laughs> How'd you be a Buddhist lion? What do you mean? Ripping the fucking flesh off something. Like, if you got reincarnated as a, a lion, how's that work? They do a lot of sitting around, though. Yep. That's yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But the, men, the men have got it sorted, haven't they? Yeah. And also, you've only seen the bad bits of being a lion that they put on the telly. You don't see them being chilling all sound <laughs> and like winking at the zebras. Sorry, yeah. Because David Attenborough's got a right agenda when it comes to lions, has <laughs> not he? I've been besmirching lions. All I'm saying is you never you see them doing charity know. work. Yeah. <laughs> because, because they're trying to suppress it. You've never been to Africa and have a look. Winking at You just Africa. literally watch the BBC and just... I have conv- been to Africa. Don't you ever point your finger at me. Have I've you been, been to Africa? Sh- Shut a milkshake. <laughs> Saying that, my, my one... African. I'm having it. Yeah, it's Egypt, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Okay, did yeah. you have a look at any lions and what they were up to? Saw some Russians on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> what were they up to? Killing a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> Being fucking rude. Oh, oh yeah, we... Um, why was I talking about being Catholic? Why was I asking you what your religion was? Because he's been raised by atheists. He's got cool fucking parents. Yeah. We, we, yeah, my mum wanted us to sort of behave, but she sort of let it slip. Yeah. It's just one of the many lies you get told as a kid, isn't it? Like, there's, they, they all sort of fall eventually. You've got gods, mm. father... I remember when I found out the tooth fairy wasn't real. Oh, because 
I'd been on holiday with my auntie and my uncle. And my tooth fell out while I was on holiday and they gave me five euros. So when I come back, I said to my mum, oh, the tooth fairy gives you a five for every tooth you lose. Rather you go to the fucking Bureau de Change as well when you go on holiday. It's sad, isn't it? What do you mean? Giving you foreign money. It's no useful in this country, we were there. <coughs> oh, no, we were on holiday, so it was to spend on the holiday. Oh, it wasn't like, oh, right. here's your money and make sure you don't spend it until you get home. <laughs> <laughs> my auntie just gave me whatever. It, it was probably Pesetas back then, but it was yeah, five. A, a cunty move to give someone money for the tooth falling out and in a foreign... Like, just give him in drachma. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Spend that. You could back. spend but it. When I got back, I uh, I used to, like, like when, when we'd get to uh, get sent to bed, often me little brother would fall asleep and I'd be allowed to go back down. And it was not long after the holiday, and my auntie and my uncle, my mum and my dad were all in the living room. And I come down the stairs, sort of snuck down after my brother had fell asleep. And I heard my mum go, fucking kill you, by the way. I've got to give him a fucking five now every time his tooth falls out because that's what you gave him on holiday. And I heard it. And burst through the door. I was like, liars! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck 17 eight. he was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Allowed to go down after us before falls asleep. I'm going to go yeah. out now. I, it's, yeah. <laughs> Liars! I actually don't think I did that. I think what I did was just waste it out for a, a while and just mm. let the lie live for when my teeth fall out and just kept making a bit of money. Fucking minting off that, mate. Oh. Does that okay. know the Father Christmas isn't real yet? No, she's in the... She's... She's, she, she's been at school, so she's just finished reception. Last reception, so last day she goes into year one next year, and the obviously kids tell each other like, "Listen, did you know that actually?" But she's still they're really innocent. Yeah. They're just cute. It's not they're not there yet. So she still fully believes. Just Christmas just gone, which was just before her fifth birthday. It was holy shit. The fat man's been. Do you use it against her? Like, like parents threaten kids with Father Christmas. Um, like I'm gonna ring them a now. Li- a little bit, just gently, but not too much. Cause my sister did that with my niece so much. She was like, "Oh, the security, yeah, you know, the, the security cameras, yeah, we did not that. the security cameras, the se- motion, oh, the motion yeah. sensors for the alarms." Yeah, Santa she was like, "That is yeah, Santa yeah. watching you." Yeah, and my niece got so wound up, she was absolutely shit scared of Santa, yeah. who like almost like. If you're a Catholic kid, a hundred years ago, this all-powerful, judgmental as fuck thing watching over you, potentially yeah. ruining your Christmas. Say what's like, like so they, me that's with an electric toothbrush, that kind of <laughs> yeah. same vibe. Yeah. You, I think you can overdo that as a mechanism of like getting yeah. them to behave. Like I said, what Serica's mum did, massively Catholic, when she was little, she put a, a black cross on her window and said, uh, "Oh no, you've that. That means you're in the bad books. You've been bad." And she's wow. Like, right. What do we do? She's like, "Well." You know, you'd have to be good and try and work it off. <clears throat> and on uh, Christmas Eve, she took one strip off and went, oh, you do, you're nearly there. You're like, you need to be good. And then like, she, she'd take it off. She'd taken it off the window. She's like, oh, you've been good. It's a fucking hard line, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, Sleep well. That's too much, isn't it? <laughs> that could backfire spectacularly, that. If your kid's just an absolute cunt on Christmas Eve and then you've still got to give her all the presents she bought <laughs> yeah, it yeah. rather than them going to waste. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm a, I think genuinely the th- all these threats... I don't get it. Point like I've, I'm not an expert or anything, but if Etta's being a bit of a knob, threatening her with something that is definitely going to happen, they're smart. They, they they're going to work mm. it out. Like if you go right, if you keep doing this, we're not going to the shops. Mm. When you have to go to the shops, <laughs> that's <laughs> definitely happening because you need to stop. Don't threaten something that's definitely happening. You need to be able to follow through the threat and go right. Cool, we're not going fucking anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like I I try and keep it. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. Here's a question, sort of on a similar thing that you were talking about there. So, you know, like, how old are your kids? Uh, 14 and 11. So, you know, when they were younger, sort of like when they were like Dan's kids' age, where they're sort of, uh-huh. they're still sort of, that age where they start finding out Father, Father Christmas isn't real, yeah. and they're talking to their friends like, did you know? Right? Yeah. Either of you, are you ever tempted to just like feed them some shite and see if it can spread around the school? Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Or just teach them about like 9-11. <laughs> send them, just send them into school. Like, you know who Al Qaeda were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that will get you brought into the office. Mm. I would imagine so. <laughs> will and, I, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Nightingale, could we come and could you come and speak to the headmistress, please? It's a husband um, talking about nine eleven quite a lot. <laughs> and what's the problem with Which that? Which is unusual for reception age children. And what's the problem with that though? Because it was a, as she said, anything that isn't a fact. Right, yeah. I just and think- the headmistress can't shout at you either. She's got no power over you anymore. Yeah. You're in school no more. You can yeah. to fuck off. Yeah. So I do. Yeah, the head teacher mm. of my child is a gobshite. That's the Adam <laughs> role. Fucker. Did you get about 9 11? 
But as long as all the information you give at it is correct, mm. it's teaching about Bin Laden, how much of a gobshite he was, nah. what he did. Where he is. This call the me, names of all the hijackers. Call me mad, but I think five and a half might be a little too early for that. You reckon? I'm, yeah, I just... Maybe I'm a bit old hey, school. We all do parenting different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> night, night. Oh, before you go to bed, you want a bedtime story? Well, let me tell you about the Pentagon. <laughs> Teaching yeah, a child conspiracy theory, like Tinky Winky. Remember the gay one? The gay conspiracy? Yeah. Teach her that? Yeah. <laughs> We're just doing the basics at the moment. <laughs> so, so she's got a black Barbie. Etta's got a black Barbie. And uh, it, it's... Who doesn't? It's really... <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't amongst us? I mean, I yeah. I've got several black she's, Barbies. She's got a black Barbie. And it's fun, like, just sort of working that out with Etta. In what way? She's, because we were, she had it playing and, like, referenced it. And I was like, well, she's a black woman. And she was like, no, daddy, she's English. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay, but you can be, you can be black and you can be English. And she was like, well, she speaks like us. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, when you, you're just getting into what, and you're looking at Laura, like, why have we got a black Barbie, babe? Why? We could avoid this. Where is she getting that from, though? The black Barbie? <laughs> no. Barbie. Toys from the <laughs> In the black. Yeah, Carl wants one. Yeah. <laughs> Where did she get this? Yeah. <laughs> Have you not been to? I've been looking for one for fucking months. Where'd you get these black black Barbies? You get it from Black Toys R Us. (laughs) (laughs) Have you not seen it? It's a whole different section. What's the song? Black Pepper. It's Black Pepper Pig. What's the song? (laughs) Love jumping in puddles. There's a million. Uh, um, Um, Yes. Where's she getting that rhetoric from, though? Yeah. She's just. She's no, no. She's just. (laughs) She is just at that age where she is working out what's what, and it's. uh, She's. It's. Like, overly simplified. Like, you've got to yeah. teach her that skin colour is nothing to do with nationality or anything, and she's working it out. I'm guessing yeah, she's, she's got a friend from school who is... Um, Whose parents are filled with shite no, and who's... send them into the school to spread it. I'm guessing it's not done very, what I said. It's not very multicultural. No, she's, got, sure. she's got a friend who is... Who is um, mix, I think mixed race. And so Etta's just working it out. I mean, this is the point where, as parents, you are just downloading your bullshit onto them because yeah. if I was racist I could be like yeah thing is Black Barbie they say she's English but is she at her yeah. off your goal love have a great day spread that hate like so you know when people go oh it's disgusting isn't it how racist like that it's their parents fault because then the children end up racist but they're just downloading their bullshit onto their kids yeah. obviously it's wrong we all think it's wrong but we're just doing the same with our kids like I'm downloading all my liberal stuff onto Etta which mm. I think is right it's just it's a, and time cru- will a crucial prove that age. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, she's got a black Barbie. God bless her. Was that a deliberate decision? She chose it. Okay. It's the black yeah. Ken. And I don't know if you've been to a toy shop with a little white kid recently. I imagine you haven't, you know, because I forgot be a little white kid. Yeah. But if they go, Oh, can I have that one? And you go, No! <laughs> you can have the white one. <laughs> Right, it do, you will get a few looks. Yeah, the staff are trained to intervene. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse it, me, love. Have we got any Aryan Barbies? <laughs> is there a black Ken? A Kenneth? It, the, I, I don't... Like, listen, I, I don't, I'm not proud that I know loads more about... There's fat Barbie. There is all sorts of Barbies now. Like, there's mm. virtually every denomination. So there should be as well. But not Ken. Oh, That's yeah, Ken's still... Asking about. Yeah, is there, is there, are there multi-use Kens? Multi-use Ken, <laughs> shove him right up your ass. <laughs> He's Depen- got a Swiss Army knife yeah. on his hand. Depends how committed you are. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Oh, there is Black Kens. It's called Black Ken. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. Turn that telly on right now. <laughs> Turn, <laughs> Turn the television on immediately. Your world's about to change. <laughs> Surely there's not a Chinese Ken. Oh, don't. That's not. Come on. Ken Hom. No, <laughs> Who the fuck is... Oh, my Lord. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, there's a black Ken. So there should be as well. Yeah, so there should be. There you go. We will learn. What? <laughs> Mate, that's not the... Looks like Adam Stoughton. <laughs> that's not the one you buy, though, is it? <sighs> so, yeah. I know there's there's one... I know there's a Barbie with, like, um, like a, a leg missing. 
Right. Yeah. Just broke. <laughs> no, but like, you're like... Amputee Barbie. Amputee Barbie, that's the one. That's yeah, the word. Yeah. Is there really? Yes, because there's yeah, children who have missing limbs who need to realise it's normal. Right, so they okay. give them the, cool. the toy. Yeah. Braddy's called Black Ken. Is it cheaper, the amputee one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're saving plastics. Costs an arm and a leg. Come on. Why? <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know how you, you're you finding the water, but I find it choppy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in choppy water. Surely it's cheaper, it's less material, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Uh, look, well, <laughs> Carl is having the time of his life looking through black Kens. <laughs> <sighs> but there's larger Kens. Oh my God, Ryan Gosling is actually playing Ken in the film. Yeah, it yeah. looks weird, doesn't it? Barbie, yeah, it does the film. really weird. Weird. Like you too, turn the TV off, kid. Too clean. Yeah. yeah, but it's meant to be all plasticky like that. Isn't it? Yeah. I think it must be kind of a cool film, though. If Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are in, it's not going to be a... I think it's going to be d- I done think well. Talks. I, I know, think I, I saw someone saying it's not what you think it's going to be. I think it might be subverting it. Will it be yeah, dark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Oh, that would be great. Ryan Gosling's proper. Cool. Yeah. And he's also mm, beautiful. George. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that'd be good, actually, if they, like, twisted it and it was dark. I think that's going to be the point. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But hang on. Aren't little girls want to go, gonna no, go not, and see it? It's not, it's not a kid's film. I don't think it's a kid's film. Right. No, I'm, I'm just from what... Like Batman was, where Batman was a bit dark. I think the there's going to be a bit more to it. I think it might be for adults. Cool. We'll see. I fucking love Ryan Gosling, by the way. Genuinely think he's fucking awesome. Drive. Oh, is it Drive? Film. Yeah. Oh, cool, dude, then. He is good. Oh, Should I have what? a break? I need a break. Do you need a break? Yeah, it's hot. There's a lot of fun. Oh, do we have breaks? Have yeah. a little quick break. Black Barbie. Oh, is that when you do your advert reads? Yeah. Yeah, so here's some cunt who gives us money. Enjoy. <laughs> Wag Wag Lids, hope you're enjoying today's patron exclusive. We've got some new merch that you can see over my boobie. Is this real? This is an ad, this. Oh, for the merch. For the merch that you're wearing. Get one of these ones, but when you buy it, get one that fits you. <laughs> they come in different sizes, but I would definitely maybe order one size up, unless you want to feel like it's a Tammy Girl starter bra. Haveawearpod.com Have is where you get the merch com. from, and it'll save you wearing that pile of shite that you're wearing. Uh, at the we just said, don't be doing the mean thing. Oh, you look like a fucking pedo. Get some merch, but he can't help himself. They just, but look at them. Look through the camera at the fucking scruffy twat on the other side of it. I like you. I think you look good. Fucking pathetic. But you'll look better in Have A Word Pod merch. That's, that's what I was saying, just in a more polite way. And that's here, because Carl will put the graphic in. Haveawordpod.com, if you can't read. Get on me. Part four. We're back. It's part four. It's the fourth part of four. This is the last part. <laughs> I don't know why that bugs me so much. When he's like four, everything's there doing was today. No, no, <laughs> fuck it's the weird. <laughs> it's a weird one that you get to the end and you're like, you do a like a counting. Part four, you count them. We've done three. <laughs> now there's four, but there won't be five. It's too many. You guys not are right. do it. <laughs> <laughs> From a five, we've we've, you've we've podcasted two days in a row. We did yesterday as well, and it's just I'm you know he's doing me. I think. Also, he's, he's been in a mood since he walked in the door. He's lit- what a load of shit. I've had a fucking Nando's for lunch. I've just sat here and watched you bicker all afternoon, you two, thinking these, we these, haven't bickered. these two need a pod. If this um, was a dinner date with a couple, I'd be thinking they're getting divorced by Christmas. But yeah. it seems like, you know. We haven't bickered. We've been all right. You haven't even you seen and both Valentin. <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> I mean, I'm new here. There's definitely been bickering. I need to tell you that. Yeah, There's definitely you. been no, bickering. You think Alan. it's bickering, Alan, because you're not accustomed to it. Scouse love. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking gobshite. Come here. Kiss me. I do. You're my wife. <laughs> fucking yes. That's an entire episode of Brookside, a, that one. We're coming back in after an advert for... Uh, oh, for merch. Shaving. Oh, No, for merch, we've done right. the shaving the balls. Is that gone? Yeah. Oh, no, no, we, no, still, we, we still, still do it. It's yeah, just yeah, early okay. in the episode. Yeah, I felt left out when I watched because I don't. I've mine's just on Kemp down there, Wild. like as God intended. Why is it really? Yeah, you just, have you ever shaved it, or is this literally like how old are you? I'm 47. So is this 32 years of pubes? Uh, no, I was a late developer. <laughs> <laughs> it's 12. <laughs> <laughs> First pubes at 35. Does it ever stop growing? Well, 
Um, pubes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why everyone calls him Gandalf Knob yep. on the circuit. Mine are tucked into my <laughs> socks even as I'm sat here. Oh. Um, <laughs> Long John's. Yeah. It's got a centre part in. <laughs> <laughs> but do they ever stop growing your pubes? I suppose I suppose half of them end up in the shower plug, don't they? So what if happens if you just never, ever cut your hair? Does it reach a point where it just gives up and it's like, all right, I'm stopping? Or does well, it keep to, going? Now you need to get back in touch with that Sikh person that emailed you. <laughs> yeah, again. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't cut their hair, do they? Do they know? That's, that's why they wear the whole thing, yeah. That's why they wear the, the, don't cut the, the turban. Is that the day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's often purple fabric. That's what it turns into. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't wash it. What are you saying, Tally, on for? I've got to show you the 95 year old man who's never cut his hair. Right. He looks okay. like he's got an acorn for the head. Oh. He looks like a tail. <laughs> he literally does look like a tail. What's he, what's he benefiting there, the daft twat? Because we're fella? looking at him. Have That's what he wants, isn't it? Have you seen the fellow who keeps his hand in the air? Have seen what? him? That one? What? That gobshite? No. The fellow who's had his hand in his hair for like 40 years. No. Why? Show him that. Exactly. And it's stopped working. It's what? It's I, like dead, isn't it? What they call it? Atro- what, there's a guy that's had his hand up like that? For like 40 years. Is it atrophied when it just... Big fan of Alan Shearer's celebration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. Yeah, like, <laughs> guru For- wizard guy. I mean, anyone who calls themselves, that's a twat anyway. No? 45 years he's had his arm in the air, as of that. Imagine oh, me. yeah. It's got to hurt. He yeah. just missed the bus and never got over it. He's a yeah, he's literally missed the bus and refused to accept. He was trying to flag it down. That's yeah. all it is. He was just a stubborn twat. He's like, bus is jumping past, everyone's going to hide. He's like, I'm literally, I'm always like this. <laughs> I'm always like this. Like, good 45 guy. years of hurt. I'm all, like, I wasn't trying to get on the bus. He can't go to auctions. No. <laughs> Learn that the hard way. Can't walk through central London. Every taxi would stop. Can't go to um, Germany in 1945. <laughs> For two reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, no. I mean, if you were going to go back to Nazi era Germany, 45's a bit of okay, a Okay, then 41. Mm. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> got some good years ahead of you. <laughs> Dan, have we got any correspondence? No. <laughs> Let's see some more pictures of dudes with their hands up. <laughs> uh, Oliver Allen says, oh, If Ollie you... Ali, Ali, Al. Ali, Al. Ollie, Ollie, yeah. I love Ollie Al. If you had to have the voice of another comic, whose would you take and why? Said this week, Ooh, didn't I? Cat Williams, isn't it? <laughs> Here's a question for the guests. That's good. <laughs> that is good. Um, it would be a bit jarring with my <laughs> face I'm physique. Al- well, I'm already excited. Would it maybe, match the shirt, though? <laughs> maybe a bit of Reginald D. Hunter. Oh, that, that would oh, be maybe. phenomenal. That oh, would be maybe. nice, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. You can you'd imagine look, it working. You'd look silly. <laughs> yeah. I think you might get cancelled pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Have yeah. Have you heard Alan Cochran? Yeah, he's yeah. Come out of the lockdowns. A bit weird, yeah. He's talking yeah. like Alan, <laughs> like fucking Reginald Dewey. I'm not from round here. Yeah. I'm from you Middlesbrough. You can't get cancelled for doing that accent. I think you'd you'd get... Let's find out. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you absolutely cannot. No, you could do that you. on stage. No, I, I mean, I am doing it on stage at the minute in a new book. No. Yeah. No, no. You couldn't replace your whole persona with the voice of Reginald Hunter, if you're a 47 year old bloke from West Yorkshire. You better watch the rest of this damn episode, motherfucker. I'm not, <laughs> I think you could get cancelled. <laughs> okay, brother. Um, laconic Southern Irish. John Lynn. You know. Oh, that'd be Just nice. like, you know, there's. I've seen so many great Irish comics over the, yeah. over the last 20 years. I've also seen some people that are phoning in some pretty fucking basic dog shit, but the crowd are like, oh God, he's so charming, mm-hmm. isn't he? Oh, Jesus, what's it like? You know? Just get up, and you're fucking knackered. And you go back to bed, mental. And you're not knackered. <laughs> we love a beer. <laughs> fucking love drinking. Uh, just get away with it, because they're so fucking, it's just charming. I think it? Kevin Bridges' ac- accent is a, I mean, he's a phenomenal comic anyway, but I Great think it's a up. huge asset yeah. to him. Mm, I think he's made that work, but I think sort of schemey Glaswegian, mm-hmm. until Kevin Bridges, I don't think he's made that. Do you not ah, think? I don't know, no. I think Something. it's an asset that he's used well. I don't think yeah. he's had to get around it. I think it adds to yeah. what is already pretty good comedy. Yeah, sometimes people give credit where it isn't due, don't they? I once did, I don't like to talk about how well I did at a gig, but I did well at a gig in Leeds many years ago. <laughs> and, uh, and a really pissed woman kept going, it's because you talk like we talk like that. It's cause you t-. And I was going, it's not because I talk like, it's not. 
And she was like, it's because you, we all identify with you because you talk like we, and I was like, no, these jerks worked in Hong Kong last week. Like, <laughs> they did not talk you like d- And I you didn't change like. your voice for Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, looking back on uh, yeah, it. Yeah. Alan adapts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that is, that's not a compliment you want from a drunk woman in Leeds. He's like, oh. no, no. Yeah. It's not really about what you said. I didn't even hear it. <laughs> exactly. But it's yeah. just because you sound like we sound. Definitely yeah. not a compliment you want from a drunk woman in Hong Kong either, actually. <laughs> Dan, I'd like you to do Nico Yarwood. I think you'd suit that one. Nico Yarwood? Yeah. Yeah. Bayesian, is he? Bayesian. Yeah, he's from Barbados. Yeah. Bayesian. Yeah. But to take it on as your whole... as You're basically taking the voice to use as your standard... Well, this is the... Um, who had the Welsh accent? Oh my God. Oh, Mark Watson. Mark Watson just started his comedy career with a Welsh accent because he yeah. thought it was funny. Yeah. And then basically got politely asked to stop fucking doing it. Yeah. Because he started out, Mark Watson started out with a, hello, this is my cat. He's got family from Wales. Uh-huh. And he just did a lovable sort of, oh, I'm from Wales. I'm a bit simple. And who asked him to stop doing it? After about three or four years, just other comics were like, what's this? Why are you doing yeah. that? He was like, oh, I was just how I started it. I'm like, yeah, but it's not your voice, is it? He wasn't mm. being a character. He was just doing his comedy yeah. with a sort of Welsh accent. Yeah. And I think a few, I think it was, I would have to ask him. I've been doing that. I'm actually from Carlisle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a long time. <laughs> I think you will get found out with stuff like that. And obviously, if you're doing Reginald D. Hunter's voice, there is other implications, isn't there? Yeah. Medical. I would go charming... <laughs> Johnny Lynn. Oh, John fucking Lynn. Johnny Lynn. Sexy voice. No, you know I'd what take it's, me. You know what it's like when you're taking a shit? Like, if you do it in my voice, you know what it's like when you're taking a shit? I was like, oh, Dan, a bit yeah, hard, it's a that. bit shrill. All the ladies are like, fucking hell, John. Mm. I love shitting. <laughs> 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 oh, Johnny John Lynn. John Lynn's famous taking a shit routine. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that we all know. It would love. work. <laughs> it would work. So smooth. He's very oh, smooth. Fucking Johnny Lynn. Johnny Lynn, <sighs> What else you got? Brad, Ch- uh, Brad Jones says, there's a Bradley trend. Jones, the goalkeeper. Bradley Jones, the goalkeeper says, there's a trend going around YouTube at the moment about getting from one place to another with one pound budget. All oh, right. You may have seen Stephen Try's recent video. Have loved it, liked it, shared, I actually did subscribed. Too. So my question is, if you woke up one morning in Mozambique with a quid in your pocket and no phone, how would you make enough money to survive, get home? Um, that's from Bradley Jones, the goalkeeper. All right. Go to the British Embassy. We'll come to you first, Alan. Well, I'd be in deep shit because, as I was saying to Dan moments ago, I have no other saleable skills <laughs> other than stand-up. Um, and, and you can't do Reginald Hunter's voice in no. Mozambique. <laughs> I could probably juggle. I could fashion some juggling stuff and see if I could busk You're my way least to... likely juggler. Juggle yeah. busting in Mozambique. <laughs> I mean, street performing, you don't really need... There's not a massive startup cost, in it? It's not like I'm going to wake up and go, oh, I've got one local dollar or whatever. Just I'll, start, I'll start a dot-com <laughs> firm. Like, you know, you need, you need stuff that's free, don't you? I wonder how much street performers in Mozambique make. I mean, I don't know what the... I know the, yeah. G- yeah. I mean, I know the GDP <laughs> of Mozambique probably isn't that high. No. Yeah. I wonder if you'd get it like, you know, at the Edinburgh Festival when you can't get down the Royal Mouse because some cunt's on a unicycle. Uh huh. Like a 10 foot unicycle. Like, oh, is he going to get on it? Of course he is. He's in the fucking yeah. Royal Mile at the fringe. He's dead good. They mm. never fall off. We seen a fella run through oh knives and fire the other day in Glasgow. Uh, he, yeah. A big setup. The running through a, like a, hot, a, a ring of fire. Have you seen the Simpsons one? Pass the dog, do stick. It's like, that. I was like, what are you doing? We know you're going to do it. No one's going, oh, I bet he's going to die here. <laughs> We know you're going to do it. Yeah. You do kind of watch it, hoping they're going to hurt themselves, though. Yeah, but they never do. Yeah. Um, if I woke up in Mozambique with a quid, I would just accept the fact that I now live in Mozambique and I'm going to starve to death. Good answer. <laughs> Genuinely. I'd just be like, this is fucked, innit? I don't know what to do. No one's going to be able to help me. I don't speak the language. I just Let's ring, have a kip. Ring Freddie Quinn and see if he's got a gig there. <laughs> <laughs> I think Freddie's probably... Ah, I'm to my fucking eyeballs in at Mozambique admin. What would you actually do, though? Genuinely. Like, no joking. I would literally just accept that I'm just going to die in Mozambique. So you just yeah, sit there I'm, until oh. you died. I'd just be homeless in Mozambique, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try and be the... You know, like the fellow in Liverpool, Plinkety Plink Man, who's got, like, the cardboard guitar, and now he's got, like, the upgraded one. Yeah. I just try and be Mozambique Sim. I just sing really badly and hope people take pity on me. Fly me to the moon. I'd just be him, but in Mozambique. 
I'd be at the consulate begging. Yeah, I'd be oh the business MC with sound, a I'd sound like That's Pete. a good plan, actually. I'd sound like Petro. Yeah. <laughs> He's in there. Adam goes to the square. Find <laughs> it. <laughs> I'd be like, hello, I'm British. Could you help me? Give up after I'm five not minutes. meant to be here. That is a better plan. I would plan. be very... <laughs> best plan, isn't it? That's a way better plan than busking. Oh, my God. I'd lose all my accent. Children. I'd be like, hello, I don't know how I'm here, but it's awfully foreign. Could you take me home now? Thank you. Isn't that a matter? Yeah. It's just a British house in all the countries that you can just sort, you know. Hey, have I got a memory of you having the same motorbike that they did all the... You know, the, the, uh, you and McGregor and his mate got motorbikes... And they and they went from like London to Cape Town. Have, did you have a motorbike like that? I've had motorcycles, but didn't I, you have one of those big BMW? I've had a motorbike, yeah, BMW one. But um, I'm glad you've asked this because I've recently dealt with a bit of anxiety about my motorbike because I was leaving it outside my house and not really dealing with it, and basically it was rotting, and and I've got rid of it. Right. So no, I don't. I don't ride like around to gigs like a sort of comedy version of you and McGregor and Charlie Borman. You fucking did though, because I, I did. did I, I did. did a gig with you in Darlington, and you were getting into leathers. I was like, "What the fuck?" I, like, oh, that might be that might be the um, one where I had just passed, and oh god, the journey back on that was really horrible because there was loads of road closures. So what should have taken, you know, an hour and a half or whatever, just ended up, and I was. Riding round to diff, and a horrible thing happened on the M62. You know when you get slapped by wind yeah. in the car and you don't notice. Turns out on that motorcycle, I got changed lanes for me. Oh, <gasps> oh wow. yeah. Oh, that bit of the M62 where you sort of go over a. Is there like a dam? There's yeah. There's water off to the left. Yeah. And so, it and it, it's constant winds. Yeah. The I. I think maybe me learning to motorcycle was part midlife crisis, which everyone says at the time, like, oh, you're midlife crisis, and you go, mm. <laughs> and then five years later, you go, actually, that probably was a midlife crisis. Um, although I still think we should reframe midlife crises, crises. Oh, because you've had a few. Like, no, I just, <laughs> no, I mean, four people. Like, I actually think that it's just, it's just people eventually going. <laughs> I fucking want to do that thing and I haven't been doing it. Yes, Why? it's about like, budget. Yeah, I think it's partly budget. I'd have bought a desire. fucking sports car at 24 years old. Just couldn't afford it. Right. Sick of people going, oh, you've got a Z4 midlife crisis. Right. Fuck off. Just got some expendable income. Yeah. Maybe it's called midlife crisis because people only do it at midlife because that's when they can start being able to afford stuff. That's exactly No, but it. the implication is you get to 40 and regardless of money or whatever, there's not, when, it, when people say midlife crisis, they mean you've got to the midpoint of your life, you're like, oh, I'm halfway dead. Oh, I need a sports car. Mm. Like there's no financial background to it at all. Yeah. Motorbike? Oh. I've never even heard you talk about motorbikes. <laughs> you. He's always talking about motorbikes. Is he? Yeah, he's oh, sh- up, are you starting a motorbike podcast? <laughs> yeah, are you? He loves motorbikes. Well, I haven't claimed that I have talked. No, I just feel like I feel like of all the things we've talked about, motorbikes has almost never come up. I can drive motorbikes. <laughs> can you? Yeah, I used to have. The, I had a Kawasaki when I was a kid. Like a, right. <laughs> I believe you, but I want to call bullshit. Well, I they were like that, like popular, like in was it a mini moto? No. You had a Kawasaki superbike. Most bike, like a what CC? A, a junior, a, a car, 120. The one two fives, aren't they? Yeah, something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got one when I was like twelve. Where did like you? Like everyone in Dovey had one, really. He's not wrong. He's them. not wrong there. Like that's true. A one two five was like a gift when you grew up. Literally, I got a, it. Was my main present for Christmas one year. No, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I, can't, I, can't, I don't know. No, we can't do two hundred episodes. And he's like, "Yeah, I was a twelve-year-old on a guy." Was like, "But why not?" He is talk, right hang, there. On, hang on, we've talked about pogo sticks. Oh yeah, 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 fucking pogo. A fucking pogo master. And you didn't mention that you were a biker mice from Mars. Yeah, everyone in oh, Dubcock. Oh, it's the school run. Come on, lads, get to school. Like, well, fucking, they were banned from school. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, they actually were. Because everyone's parking up in like. <laughs> <laughs> Kids were turning up to schools yeah, on right. Kawasaki's and quad bikes. One, two, five. People would get quad bikes for Christmas. A one, two, five was a gift. I've got a one, two, five, lads. That means you've yeah. got a decent little fucking dirt bike. Yeah. <laughs> At 12. It was it really wasn't when dark you were 18. Blue. 
Right. It was dark blue, like plastic. But you're legally sort of... not allowed to ride until no. you're 16. Of oh, course, yeah, you, you, were meant 12, to, no. you were meant to drive them like off road, but we obviously didn't. <laughs> you know, different. I'd literally just be driving down you do? Scouts, mums. Yeah. <laughs> Scouts, mums, and dads. Now. Have you never driven through Liverpool? What? Have you never seen Have like a Scally seen, wheeling like, a motorbike 20... down Queen's Drive? It's like the start of Scouse summer. The first uh-huh. time you see a fucking Scouse kid with his top off wheeling his Kawasaki down Queen's Drive, you're like, fucking hell. You've never seen Put the clocks forward. Listen. Just go, I'm, I'm aware it happens. I just didn't know it was you when you were 12. Yeah. Right. I had a blue Kawasaki. You thought he was a different kind of... I like, don't know if this is true or false, and I'm saying You true. do, because you were at school with him. Not when he was right. 12. No, this is little school. I, I don't... I year w- six, five, six. Because, like, I didn't have one, but I knew one, two, five. So like, yeah, I've got a one, two, five, lad. And I feel like he had one. I turned up to school on it once and got detention that day and was told never to ever, ever, ever turn up to school on me Kawasaki ever again. It's just or c- certain things. excluded. And you were like, permanently. fucking gobshite. <laughs> Expelled. <laughs> I fucking hate teachers telling you you can't ride in your 125. <laughs> well, they said you come, but don't come back on your 125. So I got a 250. <laughs> my mum made me sell it because I wanted to start competing. <laughs> no, it's a lie. No, it isn't. <laughs> no. What, sorry, what did you say? That's a lie. No, she sold it because I, I was getting like obsessed with it. Always wanted right. to be honest. She never wanted me to have it. My dad got me a sort of against their better judgment. And I was like, I'm going to start like competing at the racetrack days and whatever. And the Classic off-road. dad move. Don't get him a motorbike. No, no, of course I haven't. So she Don't sold go it. in the hallway. She sold it when I was at school one day. And I come home and she was like, I've sold it. You're not riding it anymore. Oh, what a bitch. shot her. <laughs> so she's dead and that's how she died. <laughs> <laughs> On the bullshit bell? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Phenomenal. I entered one competition. I didn't do very well. <laughs> Where was the competition? Let's just pull in the thread. St. Ellen's, I think, actually. St. Ellen's. The St. Ellen's Dirt Bike Challenge. One, two, five. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is that the unbelievable bit? <laughs> yeah. I didn't do very well. There was about 40 of us, and I maybe came 35th. And what was it, a race? Because I was, yeah. Like around the track. Like I, you weren't all racing at the same time, like maybe like... Time trials. Yeah. Right. Mm. And I'm a nonce because I've got a BMX. Um, did you always want... 12-year-old? Did Can't you be a nonce when a 12-year-old. You're just fucking a shagger, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what his bike was called. <laughs> shagger. shagger. <laughs> Can't be a nonce when you're a 12-year-old. I'm just a shagger. What a name. Um, did you always want to ride a bike when you were young? No, I think No, it was you just literally got to... Yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. Mine was an eighth life crisis. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't fancy it, but that, that, uh, was it called the long way round? Oh, yeah. Or the long way down? That did look cool. Go riding long yeah. distances with your mates on bikes. Yeah. Our patron special ideas are getting more and more ridiculous. Bit of my head. Like, this We're getting motorbikes. bikes. Yeah. Someone told me that, um, uh, what's the Beatles video where they're all skiing? And Help. Yeah. And it basically came about because they were like chatting, going, well, what have we not done? And they went, we've never skied. Let's go ski. <laughs> just film Honestly, Alan, I'm not even joking. That's, That's how we do our patrons. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's a good... We've never made an well official worn. music video. Yeah. <laughs> done it. We are the Beatles. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm George Harrison. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah, he's the only sound one. I tell you what, the difficult thing is getting the lyric, you can't be a nonce when you're a 12-year-old. Just, just a yeah. shagger <laughs> into a song. Just, just like yes. the Beatles. Um, some good harmony opportunities. Some advice. We give we give good advice. I think you're ready to give good advice, yeah? Yeah, I'm up for it. So someone else's life out. Yeah. Uh, ben Hopkins with a simple one. I brought a house. I bought a house, mm-hmm. and no idea what to do with one of the bedrooms. Any and all ideas are welcome. Right. Agony. I start, <laughs> you laughing at Carl? I just love when the door opens. <laughs> yeah. Start a podcast with your scouse mate. Works out really well for me. Right. Um. Yeah, what would you do with you? I assume this guy's single, so he's got no one telling him he can't have what he wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I would flip back again. <laughs> Never been married. But he's, he's going to take that anger into the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wives, gobshites, telling me what to do, along with God, teachers, traffic wardens, the <laughs> fucking St. Helens Kawasaki 125 officials. <laughs> you can't ride there. Fuck off. You're in the Asda. <laughs> I didn't even place, but I did me shopping. <laughs> I don't play by the rules. You've been disqualified. Nonce. 
<laughs> it was shopping on his motorbike. I would pay so much money to see that. <laughs> I want to do the long way down. I want to go fucking Morrison's. Uh, Spare room. What to use it for? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, hostage. <laughs> Dungeon? Hostage. Sex dungeon. Take a hostage. I never sex brought dungeon. sex into it. I just said dungeon. But yeah, oh, actual, actual dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> try and titillate it a bit if you want. I don't mind. <laughs> this is for history fans, love. We'll yeah, make this back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't whip out a sex dungeon on your missus. That's a shot. Like, what are you doing with the spare room? I've got a surprise. Why? Why wouldn't he like that? What if she was a sexy lady? Uh, okay, cool. I feel like it's something you want to get per planning permission for. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say maybe consider making a lovely home office. Oh, yeah. Always um, always with a mind on industry, isn't it? Just a desk, <laughs> computer, some weighing scales. If you don't want to put them in the bathroom, they can go in there. Little yeah. Excess storage if you've got like a lot of clothes like I have. Yeah, or hobbies. Like Could be a room. hobbies room. Playing this one with a straight bat. Yeah, surprise! It would add to the value of the property. It would, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Rent it out to a Ukrainian or give him it for free. Oh yeah. no, you can't rent to a Ukrainian. Okay, Not in this climate. At least got to give him 30 40 percent friends and family. Yeah, Oof. put a yeah. Ukrainian in there. Put five Ukrainians in there and see what happens. And lock the door. Right. Oh, and now it's a dungeon again. <laughs> yeah. Ukrainian sex dungeon. Told you it was a good idea. <laughs> but I was going back to it, see? <laughs> Get five Ukrainians, lock the door, see what happens in six months. Oh, I'd love... Uh, Do I'd you know what? Lock five Ukrainians in there, right? And in, in another bedroom, <laughs> right? <laughs> lock another five in there. And in one of them, give them a fish. And in the other one, teach them to fish. Right. Lock both doors. And see whether that old saying is true. Mm -hmm. yeah. See who goes hungry first. Yeah. The ones with the fish or the ones who know how to fish. If you teach now a that Ukrainian, locked in a room. Yeah. If you t if you teach a Ukrainian to fish in a spare room in Dovecot, you've got a plumbing problem. I'd I just love a I just love a Sabutio room or a Skeletrix right. room. Imagine yeah. if you open the door. I think that's what I do. I just go old school childhood. Right. Oh, what about one of those little full electric <laughs> small snooker that tables? you have to go oh. in? And so you're in the middle of With all the fucking oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. up against the wall snooker table. Mm. I yeah. had a snooker table for Christmas the, and no room to put it in and just come play. <laughs> you had a snooker table? <laughs> not, a a table. <laughs> not a Kawasaki yeah. 125? <laughs> Shit, fucking parents. I've got a pill table and put it I think down. I've got a video, like an old VHS of me riding my Kawasaki up and down Kemsley Road. Oh. I'll see it. I'll believe it. Did you share it with anyone or was it just yours? Who took the video? Your dad. Right. Don't write this on the streets unless I'm filming you. <laughs> and that's we always drove it on the streets. It's all we really did. But I thought your parents told you not to drive it on the street. No. You weren't meant to drive it on the street. My mum did not like it at all. No. But like, I didn't want to be the only kid in the street not driving his Kawasaki on the street. <laughs> everyone else was driving theirs. Yeah. Am I supposed to be playing with a fucking yo-yo while everyone's wheeling? There's pressure to fit in, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> no parking spaces in Israel yeah, with all yeah. the kids at the Kawasaki's park. I love how he actually doesn't believe me as well. I love it. If you're wanting to invest in property, round his way, 2003, 2004, <laughs> probably brilliant. How are house prices round here? <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Not good. You don't... Cool. I believe you. I, I want to believe you. I know you do. But you don't. No. <laughs> and it's the... the I don't believe you were that young. I was that young. It was like year five and six. Mad. Because one, two, five is quite tall. Mm. Fairly big. Mm. For, big. for how young I was. You are right. But again, you just I just asked for the one that everyone else was getting. Yeah, but he obviously, he progressed from a 50cc when he was four. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You're, at, you're, at, you know, you're coming out of reception. You need a scooter. A Vespa. <laughs> I can't believe it. Don't believe me. <laughs> uh, dear Alf, a bit more advice. Uh, Will Waters says, or anonymous. I don't know if he wants it to be Will anonymous. Water. Oh. Dear Alf, <laughs> old Willy Water, Charlie Foxtrot, old anonymous and Dan. Willy Water. Jizz. Been listening to this gem of a pod for about a year now, and I thought you guys could help. Please, can I have some advice? Been having some issues with my girlfriend because I'm due to go on a family holiday to Dubai with her family in three weeks. However. 
I've got a rugby tour to Benidorm coming up and it clashes with the Gimpy Dubai holiday. Mm. I do understand where my girlfriend's coming from because last time I went on a rugby tour, I came back three days after I said I would <laughs> with half my eyebrows <laughs> gone, a tattoo on the back of my knee saying Hazel, which is a... One month, eyebrow, you mean? <laughs> which which is the, a, a tattoo on the back of my knee saying Hazel, which is her mum's name. Her, par- her parents paid for it to be removed and a bloke called Dale Overton's disabled badge, which I use in Tesco. However, she doesn't seem to realise that I think her family are utter quags and her mum is some tired old bag. Willie Water. <laughs> who's never had fun in her life. And her dad is so dry, if you talk to grapes, they'd end up as raisins. So can I have some advice on what you absolute lids would do in my situation? Would you go on the rugby tour with all your mates and possibly die or go on some fry boring, utterly pointless holiday to Dubai, cheers you boots, you boots from Will in South Wales. Mm. Um, well, I know what I would do, but I also know what I would advise to do. <laughs> well, what would you? I would, I would probably go on the Dubai holiday because I'm actually really quite boring. I don't rock the boat a great deal, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's what he could do. <laughs> like the fuck, rugby tour goes to Benidorm. Oh, the other I mean, that is, that is a made-up rugby tour, isn't it? They're not going to watch rugby. It's lads who play rugby going oh, not. lads on tour. Lads, 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 lads on right. tour. Right. But yeah, the, yeah. the way it read, it was like... Yeah, oh, that's not what a rugby tour went means. Went on a rugby <laughs> tour. Sounds yeah. like they've got a load of fixtures around Alicante. Like and sevens or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We went on a rugby tour, Dan. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because I live and breathe it, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I just think, I've got to stop thinking about rugby league all the time. <laughs> And thanks for everyone that's tagging me into every online social question. Like, who do you know that's mad into rugby league? Dan has a, Dan has a podcast every time. And I appreciate it because, come on, you saints. Yeah. yeah. So what would you do? <laughs> well, I think this fella should um, go on the probably end the relationship and go on the rugby <laughs> tour, I think. But I think if it was me, I would go on the family holiday because I'm an, you know, quite boring to du- like I'm pathologically boring. A family holiday to Dubai. I know things have changed a bit, but yeah, that's a bit. That's a bit. I mean, much, I don't like. Is it, is no, a fam- do a family is holiday. A family holiday, Dubai. Yeah, it can be. But what you do? What do you mean? Sounds more of like I'm going to do a gig there. I've got a week on my own. Yeah. Dubai. Yeah, it's I'm like going a party holiday or a shopping holiday or a. It's not a family holiday. Yeah, it's like, not like. No, you can do a family holiday to Dubai, and a lot of people actually do do it. Yeah. Well, uh, that's what I'm learning. But it's yeah. like someone going, "Yeah, we're going on a." We're going to go on an all-inclusive family holiday to fucking Thailand. Like, I'm not right. saying it doesn't happen. Yeah. But it sounds a bit weird, doesn't so it? maybe there's a third way that we should get this chap to uh, get suggest... Get the rugby lads to go to Dubai. Suggest that the family, the family holiday. to Centre Parks instead. <laughs> <laughs> not Dubai. Not, not the rugby lads holiday. Like a third way, like Tony Blair. I think it depends on how much he's in love with his girlfriend and how much he wants to please her. He doesn't sound like he's arsed at all. Rugby tour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, rugby tour. How old is he? He's, uh, I don't know, 28. Just remember, women are like elephants. 14. They don't forget. So she will remember that you've fucked this family holiday off forever and she will use it to beat you around the fucking head for eternity. Yeah. So and you've got to be willing to put up with that if you're going to stay with this woman. Yeah. <laughs> elephants are like that. Women are like, like fucking... elephants. Yeah. He didn't come on that family holiday. Elephants are always saying it. <laughs> Hey, he doesn't. He sounds like he doesn't want to be in the relationship. Just go on the rugby tour yeah. and take a bed. Saw's kid. I'm going oh, out with the boys. I would love. No, love. but I'm not this person, am I? No, you know. No. I go. Hey, I'm going out with the boys, and she'd she'd understand. Are you coming to Dubai with the family? Fuck off. That's it's actually what I like. Exactly about. like your bed. <laughs> I love it. I love it when Carl loses patience with the advice. <laughs> I'll just fucking do it. <coughs> Shoot someone in the head. <laughs> Stop talking about it. What yeah. I like about this section is that it's actually like we don't have to live with the consequences. <laughs> exactly. Oh, if we had to live with the consequences, <laughs> yeah. there would be very different content coming out of this podcast. No, yeah. no offense, mum and dad, but that holiday sounds fucking grim. Yeah. If it's in Going three to Dubai weeks, with your boring in August, in laws in August, when it's like five hundred degrees, stinking. I'm going to Dubai in the first week of August, and I uh, I really hope people come out and buy tickets because I'm dreading that week. Because it's a hundred percent humidity at the minute. Oh, you're going to gig? I'm doing one show, and initially they were like, "We'll fly you in and out within 48 hours," and I was like, "No, if you want me to come and do the gig, I want to 
a week in a hotel, actually. Oh, is it, they, did they sell that? Is like, that was a good thing. You'll yeah. only be here two days. Yeah. Right. And I was like, it's a long way to go for two days. Yeah. So I want a fucking holiday. Mm-hmm. And then I've, I remembered what Dubai is like in August. <laughs> you know, and now I wish I was going in and out within 48 yeah, yeah, yeah. hours. 100% humidity is like soup, you know? Yeah. Soup in the air. Like you can, gr- you can drink the air. Yeah. It's fucking horrible. You're not going to love that. No, I'm not. I'm going to hate it. I'm going to spend a week indoors in Dubai eating shellfish. Good family holiday, though. <laughs> get me to rugby tour, get, get me considering we've just done a rugby tour to Spain. They're great. They're fucking brilliant. Rugby, rugby, rugby. Right, one have a word. And we'll it's close this ball out. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba. Right. Connor says, Wag Wag. I need you to have a word with my mate Dan. For some ungodly reason, he likes to have one bite of food and then one bite of a dessert at the same time. For instance, I caught him eating pizza and Easter egg. Uh, simultaneously, uh, the pizza was a meat feast, and then he had a bite of his cabri egg. So uh, he also does this at restaurants. He orders dessert and requests they be brought out at the same, same time, time so he can do this. Please have a word. I know his brother <laughs> is a lid, so the message might get through. Cheers. Is he Asian? Guys. Connor. Oh, what? just and Connor says he's not Asian. Oh, then it doesn't make what, sense. Why, why are you bothered if he's Asian? This is you seeing. Yeah, what's the Asian? <laughs> yeah, Asian people eat dessert alongside their main. Oh. Oh, is that I thought you were going to have harsher judgment based on his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is he Asian? <laughs> no, that's a common thing in Asia. In Japan? All across Asia. Right. Do you know what I just hate? Being in a restaurant with someone who fucking rocks the boat. Who's like, can you bring that at the same time? Oh, right. Just fucking order like you're meant to order. Mm-hmm. Stop being a I agree. pubic hair. <laughs> like, I love dipping me Mackey's chips in a milkshake or like into me McFlurry because they all get given to you at the same time. Yeah, also, there's no etiquette or rules with the Mackey D's. You can make no. it up yeah. as you go along, but can't you? Asking a fucking chef and a waiter to remember that they've got to bring out your dessert with your... Just shut up. Have your fucking fish and chips and have your tiramisu afterwards. You twat. What restaurant's this? Tiramisu. Italian Harry Ramsden's. <laughs> <laughs> fish and chips and tiramisu. <laughs> I think you know you love someone when you put up with their fussiness. Right. Because I'm a bit fussy, but I Are you? I can hide in plain sight and just go like, you, even you, we were at Nando's, you went, look at that. It's like fucking 10 year olds Nando's. The phrase hiding in plain sight is now connected with Jimmy Savile. You're aware of that, aren't you? Oh, yeah, the name of his thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still apt. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> but if you're fighting with that, I'm fine. With that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, if you, you've, been, you've watched this. This leads to my worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've got a friend who is. Because got intolerances and oh, an yeah. allergy to tomato, and we still go yeah. for pizza. And just to watch her order food, I know I love her as a friend. Uh-huh. That I don't go, oh for fuck's sake! Like right. I, I've just learned that it's a faff. And at some point, the waiter is gonna. You can tell he's thinking, for fuck's sake, mate. Yeah. What is this? How are you even out of the house? But it is. You do wish you could just just order a pizza and go. Yeah, there's that one. Is that not the sort of friend that you just avoid? going the food with like you say stuff really like let's go swimming yeah. today <laughs> or uh, let's go swimming instead like, of and hide in plain sight we'll do <laughs> bouldering together can't you swim <laughs> I'm really hungry she's come on for you. get your trunks on um, I had this with, I've had this with ex-girlfriends who are fussy where they're dead fussy but then they would try and make me <laughs> do the fussy ordering on their behalf. Oh, yeah, fuck that. So they'd be like, right, when she comes up, will you tell her to do this? this? And I'd be like, no, Sick, no, that. if you want this fucking shite doing, mm-hmm. I want the waitress <coughs> or waiter or whatever you're meant to say to hate you. Mm-hmm. I want to be here and be like, I'll have my steak, medium if you don't mind, chips, bit of fucking onion rings, whatever. Say this that. twat wants a... Th- yeah, scat. Nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with me. We might as well be sat on different tables. I genuinely can't. I can't think of one. You you, you get round it by going to restaurants you know are safe, though, don't you? I don't. I'm not a big fan of Chinese, but I can go to Indians and uh, there's loads of stuff I don't eat at Indian restaurants. But as long as you can put an order in, if you can go, I want a chicken tea gabuna with a onion bhaji or whatever, you're fine, aren't you? They don't know that actually I can't eat anything with fish in. I'm not that keen on. That's lamb. what I mean. You're you're smart. So with yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not. You're literally not going. And going, can I have the seafood pasta with no seafood? Yeah. Which is what annoys me. But, is this but making th- anybody else hungry? Or is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, go this is either attention-seeking, <laughs> like really awkward, awful, c- 
contrived, contrarian behavior. Like, oh, I'm a bit of a, you don't get me. I have a fucking vanilla slice and a chicken tikka. Like, that's just, yeah. you, in the end, you're going to go, either stop being a weird cunt or I'm not going fucking eating with you. Mm -hmm. like that, this is, we'll this go, is mental we'll illness, isn't it? Shite. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if, it, if it doesn't affect you, then shut up and get over it. So there you go. We've had a word with your mates. Your mates a fucking tit. A helmet. Bob <laughs> shite. Let him listen to this. Don't ever, ever... If you ever come to a live show with this cunt, <laughs> make sure he comes nowhere near me. <laughs> it's me in the bad mood today. <laughs> you have been testy today, though. Have I fuck? You've just been a bit... It again. Oh, it's, just, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Flying, You're mate. shitting yourself. I'm flying. You fool. Relax. It's good day just for a like, It's grand. <laughs> I want a video of you on a fucking Kawasaki. You and will I want have it, it soon. Otherwise, I call you a liar, sir. And then you'll see me testing. I mean, I've got a tape of it. You haven't got have a VHS you? in oh, your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Yeah. There's no VHSs in your life. They're in my dad's house. I've got loads from when I was a kid. I've got the one of me at the nativity where I fucked up my fucking line. Well, I nailed the line and then looked right down my dad's camera and said, <laughs> and see, just, dad, I fucking nailed it. And then it. just rode off through the church. <laughs> There's no room in the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I mean, you're going to have to find a VHS player. Good luck with that. But yeah, you can have it. 100%. I've got one. <laughs> Sorted. Alan's still using it. There's a video of when uh, me, me <laughs> mum brought me baby brother home for the first time as well. And uh, I'm trying to get attention. So I'd drawn a building and I'd put, made it on fire. So I've got like red and orange pen put it on the fire. I was like, look, mom, this building's on fire. I'm trying to get attention because she's got a newborn baby. It's on fire. And she goes, I don't like that. Like, that's really bad. And then I got a blue one. I went, no, look, the rain is putting it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a threat. And then he wrote 9-11. <laughs> and she was like, what's that? That hasn't happened yet. Yeah. You'll see. You'll all see. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Oh, Alan Cochran, thank you so much for coming in. <laughs> thank you. Where can, we, where can we find you on, on VHS? <laughs> yeah, I'm on, on uh, <laughs> I'm on the Insta, and that's it. As what? Uh, I think Alan Cochran, A-L-U-N. Oh, nice. C-O-C-H-R-A-N-E. Nice. We'll drop it in. It's the Welsh yeah. spelling. You know what we're doing, don't we? Um, Thanks for coming in, mate. You know, got our website and all that stuff. You got any uh, gigs that you want to plug? Doing a little tour later in the year. Nice. October. Uh, October, November. On Alan's website, are you doing Edinburgh? No. No. Good. Good. No. Shite. Don't go to Edinburgh. But if you do, see some of our fun guests. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apart from all our pals that are up there. What would you like to plug, Dan? Um, yeah, just danspreviews.com for the last ones, uh, Sandbatch and Skipton, as I've already mentioned. Tour tickets, if you are thinking about buying tickets and you're like, oh, I'll just leave it till closer to the time, they're selling out. Adam was right. They are going to sell out. So... Uh, DanNightingale.com for the last of the tour tickets. And the last of the tickets for our show, the Have A Word Live show at the Arena in Liverpool. Uh, we released the final thousand a couple of weeks ago. They are slowly moving and it is heading towards being completely sold out. It's going to be amazing. Friday, the 9th of December. Ticketquarter.co.uk, gigsandtours.com. There will be a Kawasaki on stage. <laughs> Please go and get those tickets. We really appreciate the sport. Uh, at Whistle for the pod as well. Yeah, oh, me and Carl are starting a sports podcast at Whistle for It Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, now, we always close our audio version of the podcast with a bit of music. You can't have it on YouTube because we get copyright struck. But Finn, who's this week's recording artist and what is their song? This week comes from the Blue Dolphin Wranglers. It's an absolute jam. It's very yeah. summery. It's, oh, it's nice. a nice tune. Uh, it's what a, a lad I know. Uh, but send them in, finley at haveawordnetwork.com if you're a musician or you've got mates that want their music featured at the end of the pod. But this tune is called Wild. Wonderful. Alan, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Really great. Cheers, It's been Lids. very fun. See ya. I've never had a Kawasaki. <laughs> of course.